Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Jess Perkins and as always I'm joined by Matt Stewart. Hey Jess, that's very good. You sounded just like Dave. You said you can't remember what he says. I couldn't, well I couldn't and I'm sorry if that's a problem. It is <laughs> and I had to do it because, I uh, had to, <laughs> because Dave- is uh, gallivanting. He's, he's off- swimming with pigs, you were just telling yeah, me. Yeah, he's overseas. He's having a wonderful- Which I think is a rude way to describe Americans, but- <laughs> <laughs> No, he's swimming with literal pigs. I believe so. He's having- uh, He's on He's on a jaunt. He's on a, a well-earned holiday, and so we- <laughs> Wait uh, a minute, what's well-earned? I'm just saying so that- I'm saying he's earned it, okay. so that next time I want to go on a holiday- <laughs> well, well, you are here earning it. Would you look at that? Yeah, he was when here- was his it- When was his last holiday? And we're joined by- <laughs> The uh, fifth Beatle of the podcast, uh, one of our f- all-time favourite guests and the internet's f- all-time favourite person, <laughs> Nick Mason. <laughs> Swimming with pigs. That's a rude way to talk about Americans. <laughs> 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 now, Matt, if you can edit out yours yes. and, and it'll sound like I came we up can, with that. We can make that happen we for can. sure. Okay, because if not, I'm leaving right now. <laughs> All right. No, well, I'll agree yeah, to that. Absolutely. If you can also edit out this bit where I'm being really, really rude for no reason, if you can edit that out so it seems like I'm nice. Yeah, if I or remember. Or I'm leaving. You said you're fired. Okay, if right. I remember, okay, I will do that for sure. Anyway, it's great to be here. I love, uh, love, love being with the Dugo on crew. Now it's uh, this must be like the tenth time we've been on or something. Maybe who knows? It's a, it's been a few times. Elvis, okay, maybe Mothman. He's, Elvis has never been on this podcast. Uh, Vegemite. Yep, sure. Uh, All those ones I did. Yeah, long ones. Oh, yes, very Marvel long ones. characters, Marvel Universe, yep. Superman. Yeah, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Ninja Turtles. Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Turtles. Yes. Ninja Turtles. I I was I was moving my fingers, but not in a way that helped to count. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, so somebody no at home could I'm be counting. Um, but yeah, a pleasure to have you back. It's great to be here. And we haven't even asked you to like do um, any of the thinking, the writing, the work <laughs> of that. You just get to sit back and have some fun. Oh my god, which is nice. Just do my little riffs. You, you can know? do your little riffs. You can Hope just a little fun at the things you say. Oh, it'll you be know? absolutely divine. You say something, and then I make a little joke, and then it's pointed out that the thing you're about to say is really tragic, and I'm like, oh, oh I feel no. bad. I feel yeah. bad now. What I've said. Yeah. The lost city of Atlantis. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Matt's it's another one. Matt's always a few minutes behind. I feel we've reached a point. <laughs> I feel like we've reached a point in society where we don't need to count anything anymore. Yeah. I'm just too tired to count I anything don't care. at this point, you know? Yeah. Nothing whatever. matters. Nothing matters. Nothing matters. Podcasting least of all, as oh, we know. Agreed. Can I can anyway, I explain? Thanks for listening, folks. <laughs> can I explain how the show works? I'd love to hear Meso explain how the show oh, works. Okay, sure. Meso, if you didn't mind. Okay. Um <laughs> Okay, we get we come in the room. Yes. We're in the room. Yep. A little red light goes on. That's mm-hmm. fun. That is fun. It's fun and new. Yep. Um and then <laughs> someone writes it. Essay on a topic. Yeah. And then they read it out. Yep. And then we wreck them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wreck them. We say what you said is stupid. <laughs> yeah. Then you said it in a stupid way. Because <laughs> you're stupid. Because you're stupid. Yeah. yeah, nice. Yeah. And people like that. And I think that's great. People love it. That is the most succinct way I've heard it described. Mm. Well done. Sometimes you've got to have an outside perspective. That's true. Yeah. Mm. And we always start with a question. I'm doing the report this week and I actually put five topics up and said, I think Mesa will be filling in for Dave on this episode, so keep that in mind. Which episode, which topic do you think Mesa would enjoy? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, here's my question. What animal is described by the Merriam-Webster pig. Dictionary? Nice. Just, I'm just getting an early pig. Okay, and you're that's, that's foreshadowing from earlier because you said the thing. So, thematically, yeah. this would be very appropriate yeah. if this was true. Yeah. Any of various very large aquatic marine mammals- that have a torpedo-shaped body with a thick layer of blubber, paddle-shaped forelimbs, but no hind limbs, a horizontally flattened tail, and nostrils that open externally at the top of the head. Holy shit, I've done it. Pigs in the water. Pigs in the pigs water. In the wet water. Pigs. It's wet pigs. <laughs> sea pigs. Sea pigs. <laughs> what, yeah, but what's the what's a sea pig's more common name? Whale. Oh, whales. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everybody. But yeah, we all call yeah, yeah, yeah. them. I know their Latin name or whatever it is, but everybody calls them sea pigs. Mm. Um, and that you- led the de- to the development of the torpedo, because before that, people yeah. were like- What's this shape like? Yeah. Bloody hell. I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah. Could be anything. So, are you doing a report on whales? Sort of. Cool. Interesting. Sort okay. of. Are, we, are you doing no. Free Willy? Sort of. Okay. Not a whale, but it's a shark. But Free Willy? Was Free Willy a shark? Wasn't it? No. I don't think so. <laughs> it's an orca. Okay. It's a killer whale. Wow. Oh, yeah. Is this report on Free Willy? Because oh, we're in God. a lot of trouble <laughs> if this is on Free Willy. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's that's what a weird misremembering. What if a little boy would befriend a shark mm. instead? A really deadly whale. Okay. <laughs> well, that's probably why. It was probably the deadliness of the whale. Well, I don't think Free Willy was, and for ages I was like, I love orcas, and but then you hear about them, and they they'll fu- they'll fuck you up. But right. now they're back. They're back in the news because they're they're wrecking ships and stuff, right? Yeah. Is that the orcas? Yeah. yeah. Oh. I think so. Yeah. I think they're the the whaliest whale. I don't think that's true. I think like, but I think they're like the most visually appealing whales. Like when they jump out of the water and stuff, you're like, whoa, you know, they look cool. But some of the really big fucking weird looking whales, you're like, oh, I'll keep it in the water. The ones with the barnacles and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, they come out like, whoa, like you're too big and it's creepy. Just give me a killer whale going, wee. Yeah, so that's your, nice. your idea of the whaliest whale is something that Cartoon. you like to look at. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something that looks Mm. Like a cartoon. And it it's already like, it's got a bit of the dolphin shape to it. They like are it's a bit so of a crescent. cool looking. Yeah. Just Jess's unrealistic expectations for whales <laughs> in modern society, you know? Nothing's good enough, is it? I'm part of the problem. Yeah. If, you, if you're not an orca, you're not a real whale to me. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not an orca, you can get out the bloody dorker, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. What's, what's Moby Dick? What sort of whale was he? Uh, White whale, right? White, White whale, okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Is that the yeah. biggest one? Sperm whale. Biggest blue one. whale's the biggest. Big blue. I don't know what Moby Dick actually was, but I do imagine it as a sperm whale. Okay. All right. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Um, don't, don't so, you so worry. far we've gotten to It was whale. a white sperm whale. <laughs> we've gotten to- No, sh- no fucking no shit. No fucking shit. No fucking no shit. No fucking shit. I oh reckon Dave told us that on maybe on this podcast. As if I were to listen to Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Did he do an episode about I don't Moby Dick? To Dave's. No, that wouldn't be true. Book cheat. Maybe a book cheat. Yeah, he would. No, have I think you did Moby one Dick about yet. the real Moby Dick. Maybe. Anyway, it doesn't yeah. matter. That's not what we're here to talk about. Yeah, I don't remember anything. Where, you've, done, it, you've done a podcast on dicks. Was that? Yeah, yeah maybe that might have been it. Maybe I was referring to dicks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, this topic has been suggested by Anna Dunn from Salt Lake City in Utah, Jessica Gruber from Kent in WA, which I don't know if that's Washington or Western Australia, hmm. and Claire from Sacramento in California. Yay. Awesome. Uh, all right. Here we go. But so far, we don't know what this is. Do you is. want to know what the topic is? No. I mean, you'll know pretty soon. Okay. In the second paragraph, I, I reveal what it well, is. I don't know how long your paragraphs are. Yeah, that's right. On- <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Run on sentences over here. Bloody hell. Oh, a real oh, stream of yeah. consciousness over here. <laughs> on the 9th of November 1970, a 45-foot sperm whale washed up on the shore of Florence, Oregon. At first, the whale was seen as a fun curiosity to locals who headed down to the beach to have a gander. <laughs> but over the coming days, the carcass began to decay and the oh, pungent stench became overpowering. Stench, if I said stench, doesn't matter. A solution had to be found, and after discussing the options, it was decided that the best option was exploding <laughs> it. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I've seen this in the hat. I've never properly read into it at all, but- <laughs> It I, is what it says on the tin. It is what it really says on the tin, and okay. And this is what the, the Dugan patrons thought. Mesa, this is Mesa. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And other options were the Transformers oh, franchise. Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> and that's that's a lot of that's gonna be that'll be a longer podcast. And Ghostbusters, okay, sure, those sure, sure. two combined got less votes than the exploding <laughs> whale. Oh my god, isn't that funny? I'm like, I, I assume it'd be probably Transformers or Ghostbusters. They were fourth and fifth most voted for. Topics. Sometimes I think our patrons are pranking us a little bit. Like sometimes I think they're like, that one sounds fucked. Let's make them do it. Mm. <laughs> and I respect the hell out of that. I also think some of them were probably like. I don't want to hear Matt talk about Transformers 2 Meso. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that will be tedious and embarrassing for all of us. And it'll be making Meso do a lot of the work. <laughs> yeah, mm. which I like. Yeah, and, but and it we not- And Meso, what happened, yeah. would you say, in <laughs> your was, words? Uh, after that? Transformed into a truck. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool as hell. That's what happened. <laughs> and then the truck went, oh, good, bye-bye. Yes. And went, uh, oh, so cool. <laughs> This that sounds is, awesome. That is the, the final seat of Michael Bay's Transformers, yeah. the first one. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. It's me, Optimus Prime. Bye-bye. 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 So, I didn't know anything about Florence, Oregon. You familiar with the place? No. It sounds landlocked. If I had to- if you, if, you, <laughs> if you said, what's the deal with Florence, Oregon, I'd be like, sounds landlocked. Yeah. So- Well, you couldn't be any further from the truth. Yeah. It is waterlocked. It is waterlogged. Is what waterlogged. It is. No, it's water- It's on Adjacent? the beach. It's on the beach. Yeah. That's good. According okay. to the region's website, Florence is Oregon's coastal playground with its rolling sand dunes, miles of beaches, charming historic old town, and delicious seafood. 
just an hour west of Eugene, which is one of my favorite That's a good named one. places. This is the go-to getaway destinations for locals seeking rest, relaxation, and recreation. It lists its activities like horseback riding on the beach, heading to the <laughs> casino resort, and visiting North America's largest sea cave. Cave That's- sounds very impressive. I was you're, just going to say that caveman. just sounds like a tampon commercial. Yeah. Just riding your horses on the beach and yeah. going okay. to the casino. I thought you were talking about the largest sea cave. <laughs> so that's. <laughs> but- Grow up, Matt. What? I just, that's, I mean, that's the last thing I said before you. Anyway, true. the cave does sound very impressive, much like on a tampon commercial. Commercial? <laughs> Oh, no. Tampon it's, commercial. This is very early. Page one. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, the cave's website says you take an elevator ride 200 feet down, which no. is 61 <laughs> metres. Nope. Mm. Into a cave which is as tall as a 12-storey building. No. And as wide as a football field. <laughs> During the fall. <laughs> no, and- come on, Jess. You can toss the pigskin, you know. <laughs> Uh, now we're talking. That's right. Anything pig related, you're in. Uh, during the fall and winter, barking sea lions lounge around inside the cave's natural amphitheatre. Oh, the during- pigs of the sea. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the, yeah, which are also whales. <laughs> They're whales. Everything's an animal. Every animal's a pig of something. <laughs> uh, during the summer months, these uh, sea pigs <laughs> sprawl along outside rock ledges, believed to be America's largest sea cave and the only known mainland home of wild sea lions in the world. Don't worry. They've built a gift and snack shop there. Of course they have. Of course they have. And no thank you. So, initially, I was very conflicted there because, like you, Jess, I'm like, oh, elevated down to a cave of death of some sort. Fuck no. No no thank you. But then I'm like, sea lions. But then I'm like, well, if if it floods, they can just escape. Yeah. And I'm doomed. Yeah. (laughs) But then gift shop. Oh, you can get a t-shirt. Get a memento oh, on the way. You get a yeah, magnet. Right. You can get a. Ha- you get one of those hats, and it's got the sea lion hands on it, and you pull the string, and it goes oof, oof. <laughs> okay, oof. Um, that's you know? worth. You the- could get a maybe a branded oxygen tank. Oh, yes, please. That'd be clever to do that. That's like mm. music festivals selling ponchos. They yeah. know they've got you. Yeah, they're praying right. for rain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I think i more and more, but especially just hearing that. I think I hate caves. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think I want to go anywhere fucking near a cave. Including you- Nick. Nah. Mm. Any, ca- any, I can't think of another kind of cave. Nicholas like Cave. A- normal cave, man caves. Man mm. cave. No, I don't- I'm not welcome in a man cave. Um, Why not? No chicks allowed. You know, oh, you- sorry. Come on, man. Don't you know- make me so tap the sign. You know the rules. <laughs> 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 so it sounds like it's a beautiful spot, but despite sounds all this, like hell. more than fifty years later, Florence, Oregon, is still best known for the whale explosion. One of the main reasons this story has become a legend is because a local news team was on the spot to capture the events. So you can watch. There's video footage of it. Oh, thank goodness! You'd tip them off, though, wouldn't you? If you were in the c- civics or whatever, you'd be like, "Guys, we're going to blow up this spot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you want to get the camera this. down here? Yeah, we're about to blow up a whale." Yeah. <laughs> Um, this place does look quite pretty. It I've is, just looked up Florence, beautiful. Oregon. It looks gorgeous. Isn't it funny? It's not at all. It's so funny that it's been overpowered. Its image has been overpowered by a stinking whale. <laughs> it's got like this lovely, it's like beautiful oh, bridge. That's nice. It yeah, looks yeah, really okay, idyllic. Sure. Mm. It looks gorgeous, which is not what I was expecting. Okay. According to Matthew Cohen, writing for the Oregon Historical Society, which is- Got a few pages that are dedicated to this event. <laughs> Their motto: We've we've got other stuff besides this fucking <laughs> whale. All right, I swear. God. Uh, Cohen writes: On the morning of November the twelfth, nineteen seventy, KATU news directors asked reporter Paul Lindman and cameraman Doug Brazil to cover an unusual story taking place on the Oregon coast. Doug Brazil? Oh, yeah. Is he a porn star on weekends? <laughs> yeah, he turns the camera around at him on the weekend. Doug Brazil. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Ironically, got a big bush. Brazilian. Got it. The Oregon <laughs> Highway Division was left to come up with a plan on how best to deal with eight tons of rotting whale flesh. I should say, uh, if any, any whale lovers out there, it's, it's pretty full on stuff. So, I mean, that would have seen in the title. Yeah. Do you think any any people are listening to this going, whale explosion? Oh, man. I, yeah, real. The whale explosion. This is going to be explosion so great. Explosion in population. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like the baby boom, but they yeah. call it the whale explosion. When Can't the wait 70s to hear and there's like it. a heaps of whales all of a sudden and they were all very happy. Can't wait to hear about these whales procreating. <laughs> oh, big whale explosion, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but no, it's not going to be like that. No, nah, it's pretty gross. 
Uh, what caught the attention of the newsroom in Portland, however, was not the whale itself, but the plan of how to best dispose of the carcass. Dynamite. <laughs> Lindman, speaking to the Oregonian in 2004 to promote his then recent book, The Exploding Whale, and other remarkable stories from the evening news. I think it was apparently the book. I couldn't find it. You could only buy it physical copy. I tried to get the audio book, try to get an e-book. <laughs> but there was the only copy I found was like hundreds of dollars for a physical copy. And you didn't get it. It was just it was going to take too long to post over. Otherwise. Otherwise, mm. obviously. Uh, but yeah, I think I... I I read a blurb of it, and it, it says, and other stories. Mm. But I think it's pretty heavily whale-related. And fair enough. Yeah. Mm. It's really bookended this book yeah. with them. Um, anyway, he noted, and we'll talk about him a bit, Lindman. He's sort of become the, you know, the face of it all. He said- <laughs> You'd think it'd be the exploded whale. Yes. <laughs> Just a big picture well, of that. Well, it, it would have been, but unfortunately, <laughs> the face is no more. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Lindman said, we went down there because we thought it was so bizarre. Uh, according to his report at the time, it had been so long since a whale had washed up in Lane County, nobody could remember how to get rid of one. In selecting its <laughs> battle plan, the highway division decided the carcass couldn't be buried because it might soon be uncovered. It couldn't be cut up and then buried because nobody wanted to cut it up. <laughs> Why don't we do this? No, we don't want to. Okay. <laughs> it couldn't be burned. So, dynamite it was. Some 20 cases or half a ton. You'd have to burn it for ages. Mm. But yeah, why, why does it have to be- bit, Could Is this crazy? Could you not, like, chop it up and chuck it back in the sea? Yeah, that's something you could do. Because then, you know, other fish and stuff could eat it at least. You could just wait. Just even. wait. Just, just wait. Just wait out the stench. Yeah. Yeah. That's apparently right. Don't go to the beach for a bit. That's yeah. Right. Maybe make that, you know, the, the, the centerpiece yeah, come, of your come town. Smell. Come, come smell the old dead whale, <laughs> you know? The smelliest town in the south. I don't well, know. So where I think they are. Florence already had stuff going on, but maybe a neighbouring town could have bought the whale carcass yeah. Yeah, to yeah, leave yeah. on their beach. <laughs> That's right. They could have dragged it down the highway <laughs> to their town, just bouncing along the road, you know? It oh, would, man. It probably would be pretty gross to have to, like, Carve it up. It's a big whale. Yeah, they're not small. Yes, Ugh. but also, tons. I, yeah. I mean, you, when you've got the dynamite, everything looks like a whale <laughs> that could be exploded <laughs> yes. with dynamite, right? Yeah. I mean, oh, or, or some guy, some guy's got a. a he bought this massive half a ton of dynamite or whatever, and he hasn't been able to use it. And he's yeah. like, I'm losing money. He's like, I work for the highway this. division. Yeah, right. <laughs> we don't have a lot of use for dynamite. Yeah. But we have to buy it because this is America. They make us buy all this dynamite. If we don't, we lose it in the budget next year. That's exactly right. They shrink right. our budget. Yeah. So, I've got to use End this dynamite. End of June every year, people just buying up on that dynamite. But they couldn't do the thing where you just sort of roll it. You couldn't roll it back into the ocean, this guy? Uh, no, uh, they couldn't, no. I think it was too far gone. Oh, it would, it the bigger be- ones are harder to do. But I'm going to talk about other options and how other people around the world have tried to do it as well. It'd be that thing where you try to push it and you just sort of go through it. Yeah, yeah I think no, that you thing. Don't, you don't people want that. stand on them and just are all of a sudden inside of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no good. Now I'm part of the whale. Part of the problem. <laughs> Uh, sorry to frame whales as a problem like that, because if the whale lovers are still here waiting for me to talk about a different kind of whale explosion. Yeah. But, I mean, I can't stress enough. The only explosion this whale is going to do is a dynamite top. All right, now that they've gone, let's talk about whales fucking. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, it kind of makes it sound like most of the logical options were too much work, so they just went for the easy and fun way of doing it, which yeah. I like. Anyway, I had 100% be like, oh, it would be pretty fun to blow up this whale. <laughs> <laughs> like, if, that was, yeah. if someone suggests that, it would be hard to be like, nah, let's spend way too much time hand chopping it up. Mm. Hey, what if we fired machine guns at it? Maybe <laughs> may, maybe, maybe it decided to go in the, back in the water on its own. I, I bought a bazooka online. <laughs> Could I have a go at that first? <laughs> And what I should stress, it is dead already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Not, It's not still go, ah, <laughs> like, should we get the dynamite, do you reckon? Or <laughs> could Pull we, me back. Yeah. Could we build an axe-throwing facility <laughs> slash bar around the whale <laughs> and it could be beachfront axe-throwing and you can have a drink and you can throw axes at a whale. <laughs> you could do that. I th- it's pet friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Craft beer on tap. Uh, we've got a- Live music on Thursdays. And the aforementioned, you throw an axe at a whale. You can throw that. At- 
That's never. That's always odd. That's, that's always that's odd. That's the part that will Kitchen closes us- from yeah. <laughs> five to seven, but axe throwing is still available. <laughs> that is like they do stuff like that. there's apparently places outside of Vegas where you can go and shoot bazookas at cars and and animal carcasses and stuff. What a world! <laughs> so yeah. also, uh, they, they don't ever allow it in Vegas. It's too weird. They yeah. have to be like, yeah, outside. Just too outside weird of Vegas. for Vegas. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, all these all these options. They went with the exploding one. Some think oh, they've just gone for the easy one. Not necessarily the case. Even now, you know, fifty odd years later, there's no consensus on the best way to deal with a big beached whale carcass. Uh, most options have their drawbacks. One option is dragging them back out to sea, like Meso was suggesting. Sometimes they can even be intercepted by authorities before they wash ashore. Want to get arrested. Which is the ideal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they sort of deal with them like Australia deals with uh, asylum seekers. Back back you go. Back it up, my friends. I mean, that puts it into perspective, doesn't it? Yeah. They're actually treating them very humanely, like we treat humans. <laughs> so, if you put it like that. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to do a bit of mental arithmetic and gymnastics <laughs> to get there. but uh, So, yeah, that, that's one thing they try and do. Australian marine biologist Dr. Olaf Maymecki has said that when they're towed to the right spot, currents will take them away from land and, quote, they vanish quite quickly. Now it's Poseidon's problem. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here. Get out of here. Uh, this isn't always... Possible, especially with larger animals. You, you need your boat to be at least as big as the carcass. Yeah. yeah. So, it can be hard with it. You need you know, a cruise ship. For yeah, that, yeah. So. It's yeah. the monster truck conundrum, you know. Mm. You got Bigfoot. You got Gravedigger. They're doing the- <laughs> you got- Yeah. What's yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the Megalodon. You got the Megalodon. Yeah. Exactly. It's a monster truck that is a big shark. Yeah. You wouldn't know about this. It's always playing in the man cave on TV. <laughs> yeah, and I keep saying, I'd boys, like to see it. Boys. Guys, I'd like to watch it. <laughs> no, you wouldn't get it, though. You wouldn't get the Megalodon. I'll, I'll just sit quietly. You won't even know I'm there. I just Matt, want to Jess watch is the ruining Megalodon. the vibe. We'll always <laughs> know. quietly, looking at them, watching the Megalodon. Uh, Look uh, at her there, nagging with her eyes. <laughs> So, I saw another article suggest, so even though uh, the, the good Australian Dr. Olaf said it was possible, another article was like, it's not ideal to do that because often they end up just passing on the problem along and they end up washing back ashore to a neighbouring town and they're like, <laughs> God, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> what the- oh, what? No, that's probably a different whale. That's probably a different whale yeah. carcass. Yeah. I tried. You yeah. figure it out. Your turn. Mm. It's a hot potato. It's a leaf blower situation. You don't <laughs> yeah. actually solve the problem. You just whoop, <laughs> send it to your neighbour. Whoop. Whoop. Mm. The leaf blowers. What a great invention. Yeah, I love them at 7am. Yeah. That's the best time to yeah, blow leaves. moving leaves over a while. <laughs> I'm not going to wait for a breeze. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows when that'll be? Uh, this isn't the windy city after all. <laughs> so, burying them- at the beach is another option, and that's what they decided to do with an 18-ton whale that washed ashore at Nobby's Beach in Port Macquarie in New South Wales in 2017. That's near us. <laughs> that is not long ago. Mm. No. It's, why aren't these making- I mean, they did make the news. That's where I've read about them. But why didn't they make it to my news feed? Right? Do you re- also, do you reckon in Port Macquarie they went, can we dynamite this thing? Can we? <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> Go on. I reckon someone suggested it. But I do think this Florence, Oregon one is a bit of a cautionary tale. Oh, I see. 18 tons. 18 tons. That's a big- (sighs) That's a lot of buckets of sand you got to- Yeah. One. How how far can you dig at the beach? So, they've got the Mm. the whole- You should see the photos of this hole. It's huge. It's almost like that big cave uh, in uh, Florence, Oregon. Now I'm off. And they, Fuck, I hate caves. You know, they got big, you know, industrial diggers yeah. out there to do it. Because it was also, like, quite protected from, from with cliff faces and stuff. So, it was a hard gig to truck it away. So, they decided to do the big hole. But this didn't go down well with locals as they believed the smell of the whale would attract sharks to the popular tourist beach. So, a few days later, based on the backlash, the council then <laughs> dug the whale back up. <laughs> this huge operation to bury it. They had to undo it within a- a couple of days. I thought you were going to say the townsfolk got a mob together <laughs> with torches and pitchforks and they did it themselves. I think they- brought their own spades. They definitely got a mob together and they signed a petition. Mm. You know, that mob, they're oh, angry. There was a line the of- <laughs> 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 Pass me that pen. 
So a 220 ton crane was required when the hole was dug up. Only liquid remains of the 12 (laughs) metre long humpback remained, uh, which was transported to landfill at a cost of tens of thousands of dollars. Huh. So how long was it between they buried it and they brought it back up? I think it was only a few days. Huh. Liquefied. It liquefied. Wow. Isn't that wild? That's Mm. gross. Yeah. That's what it is. Well, that, that, you wouldn't be able to cut it up anymore, but you'd yeah. just be able to bucket it out. You absolutely would, yeah. Get a pump. Uh, sometimes it costs a lot more. According to the ABC, in 2014, a 17-metre dead whale washed up on a Perth beach was trucked to a waste facility at a cost to the local council of $188,000. A waste facility? Do you mean Perth? <laughs> 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 got him! Uh, I got him. A lot of love to uh, our listeners out there in Perth. Yeah, love, 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 love it. Uh, but apparently there was a bit of <laughs> I've a- I've never been here, it's lovely. <laughs> yeah, 188 grand it cost the local council. The local council had to pay for it because the WA Fisheries Department, who thought that the local council like, obviously you'll deal with it, they're like- Nah, we're not responsible. Whales are mammals, not fish. Uh-huh. We're the fisheries department, so they didn't have to pay for Get it. Technicality. <laughs> Fuck. That's great. Love that. Yeah. Oh, um, I think you'll find. They would have high fived him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got him. <laughs> uh, that's going to come back to bite them though. There'll be something where they'll be like. Hey, everyone, a gold whale washed up on the beach. <laughs> Whose is it? Oh, I think we'll deal with it. Oh, oh really? really? Mm, Actually, I a whale is fun. a mammal. <laughs> Did I say a gold fish had rode that? <laughs> right, no. no. Bye. Uh, whether or not whale carcasses attract sharks hasn't been settled by science. The the locals, like the surfers and that in Port Macquarie, are like, even if they don't, People think they do, and that'll be enough to hurt tourism. Mm. So we better dig that mm. liquid whale back out. But our mate Dr. Olaf said he was confident a buried whale would attract sharks, saying there was no doubt that sharks were capable of detecting buried carcasses. Quote, the olfactory system of sharks is highly developed, so would be capable of detecting the remains of a whale. It's never blood that attracts sharks. It's the fat and oil. Fun fact. So mm. don't, don't worry about bleeding out. In the water. I mean, apart from, you know, probably treat your wound. Yeah. But if you're having a swim and all of a sudden you, you know, you look down and you're bleeding a lot because um, your arm's missing, don't worry, it won't attract a shark. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, uh, great. Potentially there's already a shark there, though. But if I'm eating a potato cake on the beach, that's going to attract them. Yeah. It's fat and oil. <laughs> fat but and I think, oil. But I think you should just disguise Not in New that. South Wales, though. Because- potato scallop, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's. I think you'll get away with it if yeah, you're up there yeah, going, yeah, yeah. don't sharks, it's just a potato cake. And I'll be like, oh, that's weird. I have no idea what that no is. No idea what that is. Sounds like an awful cake. Yeah. Proceed. Okay, yeah. <laughs> as, as you were. <laughs> have a nice day. So there's no real consensus on what the best way to deal with whale carcasses is, though most seem to agree that dynamite isn't the best way to go about mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And this is based on a precedent maybe set in 1970? You ran that time, yeah. <laughs> mm. But I should say most agree. Okay. Not all. Yeah. Western Australian authorities, yes. which is where Perth, Perth's the capital of Western Australia, Western Australian authorities told the ABC in 2016 that explosives are still a great option, <laughs> especially if the whale is still alive. What? Oh, what? For the ABC, Chris Lewis wrote, how do you kill a 30,000 kilogram whale beached on the sand? I don't think you a should. A high powered rifle won't do it. <laughs> what the fuck are you immediately trying to. If it's alive, try to get it back. An injection takes too long. Fuck me dead. That is insane. Waterboarding doesn't work. Because <laughs> they're in they the water. Love they love water. Kicking if it. If anything, it helps keep them alive longer. <laughs> mm. Oh, you can't kick a whale to death? Really? They, I should say, they do. It's, it's only if they're, they're basically saying this is for euthanasia purposes. If they'll try and save it if they can. This is if they're like, it's in pain. Yeah. We can't save it. Let's blow it the up. The best, the most humane way to deal with it. God, I'm glad I'm not a whale. It. Drop a hand grenade down the blowhole. Just Boom. pull it out with your teeth. And uh, it's similar to like horse humanity theory. You know, like how do we deal with this? This horse is a bit hurt. Better kill it. Better mm. shoot it in the head immediately. Uh, with, which, yeah, I, be- I trust them on that. Do yeah. they have one of those big foldy screens to put yes. around the whale <laughs> on the beach before they kill it? <laughs> <laughs> when you pull out the white sheet, you're like, uh-oh. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I think uh, I think there's going to be a late scratching in this next race. Whale race. <laughs> 
Uh, Western Australia. The article continues by Chris Lewis. Western Australia's Department of Parks and Wildlife has the solution. You blow it up. They are the only state in Australia using an implosion technique to end the suffering of sick or stranded beach whales with explosives detonated near the head of the mammals. Doug Cogran, Senior Wildlife Officer with the Department of Parks and Wildlife, explains the use of explosives to kill sick and stranded whales is the most humane way. And I think that's why Doug, Doug got into this business. He got into being, a, you know, the wildlife business to care for animals. And, mm. ex- you know, sometimes the best way to care for an animal is to explode an animal. That's right. <laughs> when I was a kid, I saw this video from 1970. Oh, boy, did it really inspire me to become... <laughs> The man I am yeah, today. Right, the real humanitarian. <laughs> wow. Like, I, yeah, okay. Obviously, I kind of get where they're coming from in terms of it being as quick as possible, therefore less mm. pain, suffering, yes, it, it, so, it sure. makes sense, but it's but such it's a- fucking crazy, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Imagine if you were applying that to, like, smaller animals. Yeah. You know, like, hey, your 18-year-old dog has had a great life, but, you know, the the- um, quality of life now just isn't quite there. I think the most humane thing we can do is blow it up. That's fucking crazy. I think after the, this has inspired me to, to um, you know, blow up maybe, a dog. Well, yeah, I was going to say suggest. <laughs> I, th- I think my my suggestion might be, and I'm, I might you know get some venture capital for this. Is the the whale guillotine? Oh uh, yes. Yeah. Just- Holy I mean, you'd shit! Have to, you'd have to get it like sort of under its its head. But yeah, then true. And is, will this off. be the start of some sort of revolution? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that somehow feels better to me than blowing it up. Yeah. But what if they turn out to be like worms and you just create two sad whales? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> two sad whales. <laughs> That's true. The science hasn't been settled on that, <laughs> yeah. so we don't, we don't know. You're right. No, has anyone ever beheaded a whale before? No, I don't know. <laughs> Not under strict scientific um, yeah. procedures or whatever. Where does a whale's head start? Oh, that's, that's a great true, question. Yeah. How, do you, how do you lop off it's a head so when you It's so easy don't... to behead a person. Yes. you know where you got we that got neckline. We've got these little yeah. neck things. Yeah, that's right. But how do you Not behead- rugby players. That's right. Hard- well, they're hard to behead. <laughs> they were, yeah, th- they did really well in mm. France back in the yeah. day. They're like, we can't- how do- where said, do we- They were essentially just getting haircuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, thank you. <laughs> See you later. Um, yes, yeah, so where does a whale's head begin? Mm. Wow. Yeah. This is co- this is really this episode's making me think a lot. Probably more than you thought a whale explosion episode would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh the article continues Doug, they quote Doug Cogran, the wildlife officer who loves animals and loves exploding them. <laughs> We've developed an implosion technique which is detonation of a charge that focuses energy to the brain and there is no quicker result than the method currently globally. He's like anywhere in the world we are market leaders. I know the rest of the world say <laughs> Don't do this, <laughs> but the rest of the world is wrong. Uh, since 1989, 146 humpback whales have been recorded stranded off the Western Australian coast, which admittedly is a freaking huge coast. Oh, my God. It's massive. Yeah. That's still a lot of whales. That is a lot of whales, isn't it? Uh, of those- It's fi- like you've got the whole ocean. Yeah. And you end up on the- be- Like, what are the odds? I've learned a lot, obviously, reading If the water's this getting stuff. shallower- Turn around, mate. Apparently, yeah. they find that a, l- a lot of the ones- So, they try, if they can, if they're not too badly decomposed, the, they'll try and get in there and, and study them, do a, basically do an autopsy on them. What do they call them? Necropsy, maybe? And uh, they find that a lot of them are, like, look like they haven't eaten in a while. Oh. Maybe they've been struggling for food and that's- I don't know. That they might be my part potato of cake. Yeah, that's mm, right. Well, they're up there. Well, guess what? You won't get my potato cake. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd yeah. rather let you starve to death. Yeah. yeah. Cost me four eighty this potato cake. <laughs> like, good. Yeah. It's an absolute fucking rip off. Yeah. And then 20 cents for sauce. That's Bullshit. right. Bullshit. Yeah. It's yeah. never enough either. The mining boob in WA was great for the miners. The mining boob. <laughs> 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 Just squirting out iron ore. <laughs> at the big mine nipple. That's a that's a t-shirt idea. Yeah, there yeah, it is. <laughs> you there? Questions might arise. So, what is that about? <laughs> it's, it's about a it's a very podcast. niche podcast. Okay. Yeah. Uh, not one of them big mainstream podcasts. Are there mainstream podcasts now? Oh my god. I don't think so. Uh, Joe Rogan. He We're says still what we're all very thinking. indie. So, of the 
146 whales that were uh, found, 50 were alive, 26 died soon after, and 16 were euthanized. Uh, according to explosive expert Ian Stiles and this guy, you know this guy doesn't have a vested interest. You know, you were talking about before the ever to a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Uh-huh. This guy's an explosives expert. Oh, yeah. This guy <laughs> definitely is like a problem, eh? <laughs> I've ah, got a solution, yeah. My boy's grades aren't up to it at school. I think I know what will motivate him. <laughs> Positive affirmation. <laughs> yeah. And then we can go down the, the quarry and blow some stuff up. Yeah, if you get an A, we can go blow up a whale. <laughs> uh, so, according to Ian Stiles, if an animal is severely injured and suffering, this procedure is the most effective way to end suffering quickly. And he has no vested interest in this. Mm. Uh, we place the charge on top of the whale's head, a bit back from the blowhole. The aim is to penetrate <laughs> that's you, the blowhole. That's, that's where the head is. Oh, there blow you go. Blow, near the blowhole, yeah. Okay. A bit yeah. back from the blowhole. Yeah. Right. That would be like the neck. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So now we know where the guillotine can go. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks, idiot. No, <laughs> you're giving away your trade secrets. Yeah. Now we know where that is. Yeah. That's right. You got some direct competition coming your way, mate. Mm. Style says the skull on the whale is quite thick, and it's virtually impossible to shoot it with a high-powered rifle. So we have to use explosives. See, you both were questioning before, but. <laughs> You didn't realise that they have to. They have to. It sounds like they have to, (laughs) honestly. I do feel foolish. Yeah. In the US, injections and drugs are sometimes used to euthanize and they do get a result, but quite slowly. Mr. Cogran says, when you're dealing with- That's Doug. Mm -hmm. When you're dealing with 40,000 kilos of animal, it's not that easy. The drug doses are massive and then you're left with 40 tonnes of poisonous bait. So, basically, all of a sudden, you've euthanized it. Now, you've got this huge- Poisonous carcass. I haven't yeah. even splo- smoked the whole bloody joint, am I right? It's, bloody, it's, a, it's a really, really big, big. Up a big joint. <laughs> Put it in their mouth, you know? You're yeah. going to get one of those big pup, those bellows. <laughs> yeah. Like blow it, into yeah. Their, blow it into their lungs, you know? Why don't you, like, Pinocchio style, just go inside of it and have a compression session? <laughs> that way you're not wasting any yeah. of it. Yeah. You're enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The whale's having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> or as good of a time as you can have as you slowly die on a beach. At least we're thinking of other ideas. Yes. Not just going straight to blowing it up. Yeah, that's true. And then what? Then you still have to, like, it, blowing it up doesn't mean it's just, like, it's gone now. Yes. One of the other problems with blowing it up is you still have to get rid of- Yeah. The chunks. And you've spread <laughs> them out a bit more. Yeah. If you less of a whale them. problem, now a chunk problem. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, yeah, anyway, Cogren says our implosion technique has been the most humane. He believed the state was a leader in both carcass disposal and humane response protocols. It's not a nice thing to do, he said, but when we're faced with it, we're better off understanding how to do it correctly, humanely, and instantly to reduce the suffering of the whale as humanely as possible. So, I, I, like, it makes sense to me, but it is also, like, <laughs> I mean, I should say this right off the bat. I'm not a scientist. But we okay. are being sponsored by whale ex- implosions. We sure are, so. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that time for our ad? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start it now. It'd be so great if it is. <laughs> They're different everywhere. Mm. Odds are somewhere. Somewhere it's whale region implosions. Somewhere in the world yeah. it's whale maybe, implosions. Maybe in, maybe in Oregon. Yeah. Probably there, yeah. All right, we'll be back in a second. Tell, let us know if it's a whale explosion ad. This wasn't what they were thinking about in Oregon, though, the humane aspect of it as the whale was already deceased, Mm. so they didn't have to worry about that side of it. Uh, The state of Oregon enlisted engineers from the Oregon State Highway Division, as I said before, for the job of blowing up the whale. When I want a big sea creature exploded, I think State Highway Division. (laughs) Uh That's who I call. According to Lindman, the hope was that the long-dead whale would be almost disintegrated by the blast and that any small pieces still around after the explosion would be taken care of by seagulls and other scavengers. I don't know how small of the bits they think it's going to be mm. for a seagull to just be able to ah! <laughs> chip <laughs> just, sizes. Just <laughs> capture a bit in the air and keep flying. Yeah. Just a chunk of whale. <laughs> and he noted that on the day there were lots of seagulls watching with anticipation. Oh. <laughs> I can almost picture them licking their lips. <laughs> they, they don't have lips, do they? No. Nah. Do they have tongues? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Licking their beaks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Don't look at me like that. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure where to look <laughs> <laughs> Look at me, just not like that Okay Better <laughs> uh, The man in charge of the project uh, was an engineer named George Thornton From the Oregon State Highway Division, of course Lindman interviewed him on the beach This is all part of the video and the 
the news report from that night. And uh, as the final preparations for the explosion were going on, it was almost like I was interviewing him like pre-games, like a coach. So, how are you feeling about it? What's going on? We're just going to take this one chunk at a time. (laughs) (laughs) And when he was asked his thoughts, Thornton replied, well, I'm confident that it'll work. The only thing is we're not sure just exactly how much explosives it'll take to disintegrate this thing so the scavengers, seagulls and crabs and whatnot can clean it up. Not really sure how much to use. Seems like a minor detail. Oh, well. They had a crack at it anyway, (laughs) opting to use half a tonne of dynamite. I've seen this amount described both as too much and not enough. (laughs) Mm. Talking to KTU years later, Lindman said, Thornton had consulted with the United States Navy, which had done things like this in the past. The general consensus from all involved after the explosion was that not enough dynamite was used. So, yeah, should have been maybe the full ton, Mm, 10 tons. I mean, can you use enough? How much you got? We'll yeah, take it all. That's exactly right, yeah. Just fill it up. Better to do too much than not enough. Yeah. Blow up the town if you have to. Yeah. Yes. Right. yeah. I mean, you, yeah. at Starting the moment. Again. Look, we have some beautiful bridges there. Yeah, that's right. Before Get rid of them. that day, their biggest attraction was a huge cave. You can create a second one. Oh, yeah. my God, yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Double your business. Just use your heads. Fucking <laughs> hell. I'm sick of having to do this for everybody. Yeah. And by do this, I mean do everything. Yeah, yeah. everything. <laughs> Freaking hell. Unbelievable. Use your brains, Florence Use your Oregon. brains. Jeez. So how common is it for sperm whales to be washed ashore? According to Caroline Lowbridge, writing for the BBC in 2012, the Cetacean Strandings Investigation Program, some sort of British thing, CSIP, IP, CSIP, mm. maybe we'll call it. <laughs> CSIP investigates whale, dolphin, and porpoise. Poi- porpoise. Poi- poi- <laughs> How do you say that word? It investigates with porpoise. <laughs> with porpoise. How do you say that? Am I close? Yep. You're nailing it every time, okay. even when you say it different ways. You're nailing okay, it. Okay, great. Yeah. So, it- CSIP investigates whale, dolphin, and porpoise. Yeah, that doesn't feel right. Is that right? No, it's right, though. You're right. It is right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> it feels like I'm saying it weird. No, you're saying no, it perfectly. No, no. That's great. It's good. Sea Soup investigates wild, wild dolphin and poisonous strandings, again. recording nine cases of sperm whales being washed ashore in the UK alone in 2011. Mm, what about And poipuses? obviously, UK is a lot smaller than the US. Yeah. Uh, Poipuses, <laughs> uh, quite a bit more, I think. They're, they're a lot smaller, though. Mm. Uh, but it sounds like there are heaps more if you count all whales. As Lowbridge wrote, since 1990, CSIP has recorded about 10,500 strandings of dead and living cetaceans and approximately 10% each year are whales. Hmm. Uh, interestingly, police had to investigate when dead whale parts were put up for sale on Facebook <laughs> back then. Uh Rob Deville from the Zoological Society of London said that whale parts would technically belong to the crown. They're like, you you can't just take whale parts and Classic sell them. Oh. Rob Deville. They're owned by the mm. crown. He said they are classified as royal fish. Those are the Queen's whale bits. Yeah. yeah doesn't, the, doesn't the king, doesn't he own all, I don't know, big birds or something? Some sort of oh. big, what swans? Don't, don't, yes, the there king, is a the king, thing king about swans. swans. Yeah, yeah, and that's like a real old rule. He owns all, all the swans. You're not allowed to eat swans. <laughs> yeah, only, only the, the king, king can, can eat the swans. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah, some really, really like centuries old rule. But apparently this is a similarly old rule. Uh, a very ancient statute gave the head of the crown the right to all cetaceans stranded around the UK. Oh, he gets them all, does he? Well, called, lucky for some. Called dibs. Yeah. But apparently it's, it's, it's not that straightforward because- the king has, I mean, and I hadn't even thought about this, but your problem about where the head starts and ends in a while mm. would be a nightmare because uh, the king has the right to the head and the queen has the right to the tail. Whoa. And the commoners get the stuff in the middle or the House of Lords gets the stuff in the or middle. Is what that, the fuck? Or is a whale just Four. head and tail? Mm. Oh, it's a good point. Yeah. Uh, nothing for the people. Nothing yeah. for the people. That yeah. sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I wonder during Queen Elizabeth II's reign- who, so, no one had right to the head during mm. that period? Oh, they were just know. whale heads being- Yeah. Just, what what do, do they do with them? Blow guillotine them up. Him, guillotine them off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Same you know. the French. Yeah, that, that's right. <laughs> they love them. Those freaks love them. <laughs> they love them in a whale head. Anyway, she must have been furious, uh, Queen Elizabeth, in 2009, which is how I say 2009, <laughs> when people <laughs> took turns to- The year of the porpoise. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, in that year, people took turns to climb on and ride the carcass of a minke whale that washed ashore so that they could ride the body for photos and whatnot. 
of a of the whale, which washed ashore in the Welsh town of Barry. Mm. What's a minky whale? Yeah, right. that's a that's a cute name though. It is cute. Look at that. I feel like maybe a smaller one. I bet they're gross. <laughs> we should look it up. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at this thing. Oh no, mink they whale. they look great. Mink, minky, mink. Yeah, that's a cool. That's I mean, that's a classic whale. Oh, that is a classic whale. I'm yeah. less impressed by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. just a whale. Yeah, whatever. What do you want? Yeah, minky whale, more like standard whale. Yeah. <laughs> vanilla whale, anybody? <laughs> I love vanilla. All right, back to Florence, Oregon. <laughs> like to me, that's a fucking whale. Yeah. That's a- they are sick. They yeah. look so like like orcas. The, they're just sort of a bit shiny. I love that mm. black and white. Yeah, you call them thing. killer whale, but it's more like killer like yeah, like killer radical. Looks. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Killer riz. Yeah, that's what young people say, isn't it? <laughs> they say right. riz. It's got riz. Mm. It's got riz coming out the wazoo. Yeah, <laughs> that's what the kids say. That's it's a Dua Lipa say. song, I think. Yeah. Riz are coming out of the wazoo. It's really good. It's in the Barbie yeah. soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> So, back to Florence, Oregon. On the 12th of November, 1970, it's going to happen. Yeah. So, three days earlier, it, it arrives. The stink gets bad three in three days. It doesn't take long to get stinky. No, nah, yeah, mm. they, were, they were breaking down and getting pretty gross quick. So, according to Lindman, the dynamite was buried primarily on the leeward side of the whale, which was the, you know, the, the land side. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, with the idea of- Blowing, blowing it, it out to the sea. Right. So I could flow and yeah, nice. the seagulls would be able to peck out. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. They said seagulls and crabs. They thought it was going to be tiny pieces. Tiny little morsels. Mm. Uh, just a sliver. Because I'm a crab. <laughs> uh, there were about 75 bystanders and they were moved back a quarter of a mile away. So they just drag race there um, individually. I think Paul Walker drove them all. Uh, at this point, spectators are heard ooing and ahhing in the footage Ooh. just before the explosion. Ah. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ew. Ooh. <laughs> uh, those idiots, those absolute <laughs> rubes. You can hear one mother telling her child, you can take your hands out of your ears now just after the explosion. <laughs> God. So the explosion. You can take your hands out of your ears now. The explosions okay. happen. You look mate. like an idiot. <laughs> you look silly. Don't you are your embarrassing mother. me. Others are heard laughing just after the explosion. God. But this doesn't last long. Because soon the splattering sound of blubber chunks falling to the ground can be heard. When then a woman calmly observes, like too calmly, she goes, Here come pieces of a uh, whale. <laughs> what well, I don't know what <laughs> Yuck. Mm-hmm. Cordon Lindman. Quote, our cameras stopped rolling immediately after the blast. The humour of the entire situation Why? suddenly gave yeah, way mistake. to a run for survival as huge chunks of whale blubber fell everywhere. Pieces of meat passed high over our heads while others were falling at our feet. The dunes were rapidly evacuated as spectators escaped both That's the falling that debris. That's what that song's about, that crowded house song, Fall at Your Feet. Yes. It's, it's, it's a whale blubber. Yeah. yeah Not a lot of sense. people know that. Yeah, that's right. But it's a wow. whale blubber based song. Whenever well blah blah falls at your feet, you let your whale well, blah blah <laughs> rain, rain, rain down, down on me. Go oh beautiful God. song. Mm. The whale blah blah. <laughs> you know, yeah. as it goes on. Yeah. Uh, so That's this- a single. We can release a single. We'll we'll do yeah. it up, yeah. That's just a little taster, a little morsel. Uh, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll do it on like a version. <laughs> So the dunes were rapidly evacuated as spectators escaped both the falling debris and the overwhelming smell. <laughs> so I was like, we'll solve this smell by exploding it yeah, everywhere. Yeah. It can't smell worse on the inside. <laughs> Why would it? Oh, man. <laughs> Here's some of Lindman's finest work, I think. So in, in the news report that went to air later that day, that night, uh, prior to the explosion, he said, the sand dunes were covered with spectators and land lubber newsmen, shortly to become land blubber newsmen. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> your- the pure glee on your face as you read that. How does he do it? Lin How Man. Does he do it? Lin Man, Lin the man. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, R- Riz. Up the wazoo. Yeah. Up to Lin Man's wazoo. That's yeah. right. You know what Riz is for sure. <laughs> I mean, he was obvious. It's so funny that he just went through this pretty scary incident. Mm. And he's like, now for some wordplay. <laughs> yeah. Because right. then he goes, he goes, I'm going to do a, a little wordplay joke. Then I'm going to do a sentence full of alliteration because he goes straight after the land blubber newsman mm-hmm. line. He goes, for the blast blasted blubber beyond all believable bounds. My God. Yeah. He's just having a good day at work. He's having a great time. Yeah. He was 23 at the time. Yeah. He's giddy. He's giddy with the excitement. Yeah. You know? This is great. 
Uh, when the blubber sta- this is back to the Oregon Historical Society um, article. When the blubber started hitting the ground around us, we realized we weren't far enough away, Lindman said. We were running away when we heard a second tremendous explosion in front of us. What? It sounds a bit like a, you know, like a weird surreal war scene, you know? Mm. A piece of blubber the size of a coffee table hit the top of an Oldsmobile and completely flattened the roof. It, ex- it Like, it just exploded. The windows blew out. If anyone was in the car, they would have been squashed. See, that was going to be my question: was how big were the pieces of the of the of the blubber, yes. like the size of a brick or like the size of a coffee yeah, table? Yeah, they were you know? huge. And in the seventies, a coffee table was big. Yeah, you, yes. you would have a lot of like entertaining. You know? Yeah, that's so. right. Yeah. A lot of fondue being served mm. on coffee tables. Tell you that much. That's right in your conversation pit. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Very seventies. This car wasn't. It wasn't parked on the sand or anything. It was parked a quarter mile away. Oh, my God. Luckily, Paul Walker just got out of it. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, fortunately, that was probably the worst damage that was done. No humans. Humans got hit, but not with huge pieces. No one got killed or injured badly. However, everyone on the scene was covered with small particles of dead whale. <laughs> and apparently, uh, everyone there was unable to get rid of the stench for many, many days afterwards. They just stank it up. Of um, rotting whale. Well, to this moment, I'd be like, I would have wouldn't have minded being there, but I think <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be stinky. No, thank you. No, yeah. thank you. Mm. Just bring an umbrella. <laughs> Lindman continues. As for the success of the effort, well, the seagulls who were supposed to clean things up were nowhere in sight, either scared away by the explosion or kept away by the smell. That didn't really matter. The remaining chunks were of a size that no respectable seagull would attempt to tackle anyway. As darkness began to set in, the highway crews were back on the beach burying the remains after all, including a large piece of the carcass, which never left the blast site. And when he says a large piece of the carcass, I would say the majority of the Ah. carcass. (laughs) Yeah. The bottom bit. Yeah, Yeah. it was like- It's like it looked like still a full whale. Oh. There's footage of them, you know, getting a- a digger in there and just burying it anyway. Had they considered more dynamite? Well, I mean, a second round of dynamite. Yeah, it's you know? funny because that head engineer before the explosion, he said on camera, he said, "We're not sure. We might have to give it another round." But obviously, they were like, <laughs> "Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not after that." So fair to say, it was a bit of a failure. Yeah. Mm. Okay. A fail whale. That's what they would call it. A they whale. Would, yes, a they whale. Would. A whale. Yeah. I think that's right. Is that, so, is that what the kids are saying now? Yes. Yeah. Yep. You got mad whale. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Some of like that. This is according to Cowan. At the time, Lindman and Brazil had no idea that the news footage they captured would become arguably one of the most watched films in Oregon history. <laughs> the footage eventually made the evening news an odd singular moment in o- Oregon history, and the seemingly one-time story found legs. A videotape copy was made and shared. Copies were made of copies, image quality deteriorating with each duplication. And Dave Berry, a columnist for the Miami Herald on the other side of the country, found the footage and mentioned it in his column he wrote in May of 1990. And a lot of articles suggest that this is when it really took on a a bit of a viral- This is a real meme, isn't it? Yeah. Meme before memes. Pre-meme. Although Barry's column is often credited as the instance that generated initial interest- the footage didn't really take off until a copy of the broadcast found its home on the internet, quickly being shared across many websites. I love I love websites. You, yeah. yeah. What oh, are your favourites? You love this. Um, fark.com. Remember fark.com? <laughs> F-A-R-K.com? Had all sorts of interesting things on it. Remember mm-hmm. that one? I don't know if I remember fark.com. Well, you should get into it. I think it's probably still around. It's I'm trying to think be. of the early websites. That- Geocities.com? Geocities. Angelfire.com? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah Make yeah, your own yeah. websites. Imagine yeah, that. Nice. Uh, I think the first website I ever saw, a friend of mine. Um- <laughs> first website I ever saw. <laughs> yeah. Rotten.com. Rotten.com That's is what a big they'd one. Have a, they'd have an exploding whale on Rotten.com, let yeah. me tell you that. Yeah. So, yeah, it started to be shared across many websites. Probably things like Rotten.com yeah. and Fark. Fark.com. Fark.com. Is that a dedicated to uh, the king of Australian TV, Graham Kennedy, and his yeah. famous crow call? Absolutely. Fark. Very controversial. Very good stuff. <laughs> said fuck. Endlessly funny. No, he didn't say fuck. No. So, I, I don't know what people are talking about. Yeah. Licking his lips. It's yeah. great footage. <laughs> it's good stuff. Uh, sorry, beak. Licking his beak. <laughs> <laughs> Graham Kennedy, famously no lips. Yes. Yep. Famously a bird. The no-lipped king of Australian He's television. He's the o- ostrich puppet one, isn't he? That's right. <laughs> Some niche stuff going on here. Uh, <laughs> 
So, long considered to be one of the first viral videos, a 2006 UK study estimated that the exploding whale video had been viewed 350 million times. And that's 17 years ago. So, you can only assume it's probably 351 million times or something Mm. by now because I watched it a million times. (laughs) Uh, So, the town, you might be wondering, how do they feel about it? Are they proud of this? Mm. Are they not? Well, Brian Peach wrote, in the New York Times about the 50th anniversary of the event in 2020, uh, he quoted Megan Mesmer, Florence City's project manager. She said, if you talk to people, it's not necessarily a proud moment. Oh. The in, in particular, the- um, But if you read people's minds- Yes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's not particularly a proud moment either. Thornton lived into his 80s, the man who was in charge of it, and he never got on board with it. He hated people asking about it. <laughs> And, yeah, he felt really embarrassed. So, it was pretty sad. You kind of wish that he'd just see the f- the fun of it. No, yeah. one, no one really cares. It's just, you know, you didn't. Who, Nobody how got would in you trouble know? for anything, right? Like, no. And, so- you, you know, the, you did check with the Navy. I'd be, I'd be like, yeah, I did what they told me to do. Yeah, yeah. Pretty mm. funny thing. Anyway. Pretty gross. Whoops. Yeah, but unfortunately, it sounds like he sort of, he just felt like it plagued him. And every mm. time it went viral again, he'd be yeah. like- mm. And uh, and then there's one famous time where he's talking about how he hated talking about it. And he goes, every time I open my mouth, it just explodes in my face. And apparently <laughs> was not on purpose. Uh-huh. And people are like, that is good. And he's like, I freaking hate yeah. this. Yeah. I hate everything about it. Yeah. I hate you. This, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm exploding with rage and blubber right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I've done it I've again. I've done it again. Ah. The blast is a point of contention for some residents. Miss Mesmer said, as the city is often blamed for the decision to blow up the carcass, she very defensively was like, uh, the State Highway Division was actually responsible. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Bordeaux, Bordeaux uh, the owner of a local art supply store, said the explosion is still a little bit of a touchy subject for residents. 50 years later. Yeah, especially guys, those involved in the blast. Guys, chill the fuck out. <laughs> it's, I feel like it's such a shame because, if I mean- I can understand how it would be embarrassing for a while, but you hope you'd just eventually be like, well, anyway, it was cool to be involved in something that is remembered. Yeah. This bloke's selling a lot of tins of whale blubber grey paint in <laughs> yeah. the store, though, so yeah. <laughs> he's doing all right out of it, isn't he? You imagine that um, there wouldn't be many day, you know, an ordinary day for the highway patrol division mm-hmm. that would be remembered 50 years later. Yeah. In, in the last couple of years, residents were asked to vote for a name of a new park. Oh, yes. In Florence. And more than half of the final tally voted for Exploding Whale Memorial Park. <laughs> uh, okay. So, I, I think I think maybe for a younger demographic, it is pretty funny. Yeah. They're mm. getting on board. That was 439 votes out of 856 total votes. More people voted on this topic than the name of that park. Isn't that wild? <laughs> um, yes. That is wild. That is wild. This is way less important than a park's name. Yeah. And that's why uh, it sounded pretty random that Joe Bordreau was interviewed, but Joe uh, also designed the logo of the park. There it is. Other options. When you've got a logo, everything looks like a thing that needs a logo. That's what I always say. (laughs) And you can sell them a logo. Yeah. Yeah. Did you coin that one? Yeah. I was. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. The other popular options, although not very popular, were Bridgeview Park, which is so dull. Boring. And Suslaw River View Park. Because you can both view the bridge <laughs> and the, the Suslaw River from the wow. park. And yeah, we saw it in that in that photo. So, so that makes actually sense. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Both of those make sense. A lot of park names don't really make sense, to be honest though. I'm always just like, you know, the park. The park near this. Yeah. I don't even know the name of parks. But I think like I now want to go to that park. Yeah. I want to get a photo with that sign. Um, if, you, if you had exploding whale memorial park, you could build like a, like some sort of water feature. Yeah, mm. and it's, it's the whale is there, and then every hour on the hour, like it, <gasps> yes, like the water comes out and bits come off it, yes. and then they, they come and down you go, again. Whoa! Yeah, you go whoa, exactly. And the like the playground could be whale themed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Kids could like you could have like a whale seesaw, but also like chunks of but they're like rocks or stuff yeah. for kids to climb on but it's yeah, like yeah. they're painted like chunks of whale right i thought you were saying the rocks would fly into the air and i love that as an idea <laughs> i think that'd be fine I when i was a kid we used to let rocks fly in the air at the playground <laughs> right. i can't see any way i feel that- both ways those rocks went <laughs> i can't understand how that could end badly so yeah so the the new sign uh made by the local arts store worker mm-hmm. ha- the picture is a rendering of a whale spouting water in the shape of a heart 
<laughs> That's nice. And Miss Mesmer again. <laughs> I feel that so much of it reads as defensive. She goes, "It's not gory. It's actually a cute whale. It's a cute whale. Okay, <laughs> it's not so. It's not an exploding whale. Okay, it's cute. It's not gory, and I like that if energy it was cute, from Miss Mesmer. It'd be a killer whale. Mm. Mm. Okay, and if it was cute, you wouldn't have to Find go on the record whale. saying it's a cute whale. A cute whale. It'll that speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. Mm. This also, whale, that's not historically accurate, is it? Yes, that's it should my be a problem. Rotting, with it. Exploded whale. <laughs> You know? Yeah. I think they've missed a trick here. Yeah. So she hopes that the park can serve as a reminder that, quote, we should celebrate our mistakes and not be embarrassed. And that's a beautiful- That is nice. Way to think about it. I agree. And if only our man Thornton were alive to hear that words of advice. Anyway, I love- If it wasn't for this man Thornton, I'm just sad he never came to terms with it. Yeah. Mm. I thought he did a great thing, exploding a whale into the air. (laughs) Uh, the 1970 blast was a lesson learned for Oregon. There is now a policy to bury carcasses that can't be removed easily, Miss Mesmer said. So that's what they still do. They just bury them. Paul Lindman has said, just as a final thought from him, how it changed his life. He <laughs> says, I was asked about it virtually every day of my life or commented on it by everyone, strangers alike. To have this and then, um, so he's like, he's like telling a story about um, going to a coffee shop that week. And he came out and someone goes, but you know, one's mentioned the, a stranger goes, but you know, one's mentioned the exploding whale yet. And he's like, actually, they just did inside the shop. And just, <laughs> it was like 7.30 a.m. He's yeah. like Imagine a day of that every yeah. day. Like, yep. But he seems to be cool with it, you know, but still. And Brazil said, the cameraman, to have it live as a story still on the internet after 50 years is just amazing. Um, hmm. Which I think, I mean, you're setting a pretty low expectation. <laughs> I think there's- all sorts of obscure stories that live on the internet. Mm. Yeah, but for 50 years? Oh, that's a good point. That is a great point. Yeah. I didn't I even realise the internet that went back. that far you back. You take that I back. I wonder when we're going to re- reach the point where people are like, no, they faked that. Because you know everything on the internet yeah, like, yeah, they yeah. faked that. Well, yeah, they faked it actually. That is funny you say that Uh-oh. because when it was going viral, that's yeah. what everyone thought. They're like, that's clearly faked. And a part of that was how Lindman was so jovial about it all. They're like, clearly this is bullshit. This right. is like an April Fool's Day prank right. or something. Right. But- Oh, unless I've fallen for it, I believe it's true. <laughs> pranked. Fake. Fucking yeah, pranked. Thornton, is, went his whole life pretending that he hated it, yeah. but he was actually a character actor. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, every time people mention it to me, I'm like, that's another dollar in the bank. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> this, is, this is part of the Highway Patrol's budget. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Crisis actors. <laughs> so, that's the story of the Florence, Oregon whale explosion. I thought I'd- just to finish, tell you a quick story about maybe the second most famous whale explosion. Sure. Do you have something to do with this? I thought that's where you were going with that. About it, I just thought I'd tell you about the time I exploded a whale. <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, this one happened in Taiwan, a place I certainly have never been and had nothing to do with this. Interesting. Very defensive. Yeah. Because your T-shirt says otherwise. Oh, no. <laughs> was it the Taiwan whale explosion? I went to Taiwan. And I done it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Me, Matt Stewart. This happened in 2004, or oh, 2004, as I say. Um, <laughs> let me tell you the story uh, in brief via Reuters, the um, <laughs> Reuters. news. No, it's Reuters. What is it? Reuters. 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 Yeah. According Let's tell to- you a story all about how that whale got flipped, turned upside down. <laughs> it's dynamite. That'll do it. Mm. Residents of Tainan uh, learned a lesson in whale biology after the decomposing remains of a 60-ton sperm whale exploded on a busy street, showering nearby cars and shops with blood and organs and stopping (laughs) traffic for hours. So, this was a little bit different. This one was not on purpose. This sounds spontaneous. Or porpoise. (laughs) Is that how- I think I said it right that time. That felt right. Yeah. Yeah. What was I saying before? You've been saying it like that the whole time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you'd be saying it right the whole time. Okay. Yeah. Nobody will tweet you about it at all. Yeah. You'll be fine. Oh, thank God. Uh, the 56-foot-long whale had been on a truck headed for a necropsy by researchers when gases from internal decay caused its entrails to explode in the southern city of Tainan. Residents and shop owners wore masks while trying to clean up the spilt blood and entrails. What a stinking mess. This blood and other stuff that blew out on the road is disgusting. And the smell is really awful. 
a BBC news report quoted one resident as saying. Wow, do you get the bloody Pulitzer Prize for that? <laughs> oh, this is this smells actually. It's oh, bad. yucky. Yucky, uh, no, no, don't like it. I thought this would be good, but it's bad. <laughs> uh, I'm really disappointed. When I heard guts and blood explosion. I was like, hooray. <laughs> oh, this, this sucks. Is- oh, 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 pee-wee. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> uh, researchers at the National Cheng Kung University in Tainan said enough of the whale remained to allow for an examination by marine biologists. This they is said w- it was yucky. <laughs> they said, yeah. <laughs> Our research- uh, <laughs> Indicates it's yucky. <laughs> it's actually really gross. <laughs> That's our conclusion. Uh, this is where the report takes what I would call a, a bit of a, a left-hand turn. Oh, okay. To the sexy. What's offensive to me is a left-hander. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you don't know. I'm a left-hander, but I'm also not a snowflake, so I'll find <laughs> this. <laughs> so, it goes on to say- you. I'm going to kick you. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> my left foot, too. Oh, fuck. fuck you. Once the carcass was moved to a nearby nature preserve, the male specimen, the largest whale ever recorded in Taiwan, drew the attention of locals because of its large penis. Measured at some five feet, the Taipei Times reported. More than a hundred Tainan city residents, mostly men, have reportedly gone to see the corpse to experience the size of the penis, the newspaper reported. <laughs> what is it? Wait, men what? and penises. This is like- Gone uh, to experience? What does that mean? What does that mean? What are you doing? Where is that? Um, it's it's science circus or something like that where a lot of people have attempted to run as fast as Kathy yeah, Freeman yeah, and they yeah. smash into walls and stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's that. It's exactly that. Yeah. Just men going like, I reckon it's about the same actually. <laughs> yeah. No, it's about the same. Not far. I mean, when you think about like in relation to <laughs> in the, like the ratio from the body to the dick, it's actually kind of small. Yeah. And, like <laughs> if you measure it from here, actually, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Big, but if you may, may, yeah. It only looks big because it, it's shaved its pubes. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, you look at how big the whale is, it, like, comparatively, that's actually, like, that's nothing that special. But, like, you know, if you do the same for men, I'm just saying, <laughs> comparatively. I really just did not see the article going there. Yeah, that yeah. is a bit of a left-hand turn. So, it, it exploded, but obviously its huge cock was still intact. Yeah, it couldn't be, <laughs> Thank God couldn't for be that. exploded. Thank God that those hundred men- or well, mostly men were able to experience it. Oh man, I've just got so many other things in my day I'd rather do <laughs> than go uh, and name ten. <laughs> look at a big whale dick, but the body's also gross. And I feel like I I can imagine it. It's like, yeah. oh, do I need to go see the Mona Lisa? I know what it looks like. Yeah, it's mm. the same as that. Yeah. But well, a big but, wild dick, yeah, I got I mean, it. What if you're Roger local, though? What if, what if, Jess, you, you know, you're on your way to work and you, you're getting your coffee at the mm-hmm. cafe or whatever, mm-hmm. and then there's a sign that says whale dick, 100 metres on left. You know 100 metres. Yeah, 100 metres, yeah. Oh, nah. Yeah, yeah, well. 50 metres? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. All right, okay. If there, I'm getting out for one of those signs, but yeah. I'm not I'm not getting in the car, chucking it in, yeah. in my GPS yeah. big whale yeah. dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah, I'm yeah. on a leisurely road trip yeah. and, you know, I've stopped at a few scenic lookouts because I've got the time and yeah. then I see the sign for whale dick 100 yeah. metres on left, I'd be like, I've got- What do they mean by whale dick? Yeah. Yeah. I'll have a look. Based on the Michelin star rating, this would only get a one. Like, if I happened to be going that way yeah, and yeah. it was there, I wouldn't go out of my way. Yes. Yes. It's not a three, obviously. Yes. I would make a special trip to look at the whale dick, but- If it's there. It's there. Yeah. yeah. I reckon you. us three would make good uh, road trip buddies. I feel like we're all on the same page there. Because <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you could go with some who are going, hey, it's just a 45-minute uh, detour to go see a whale dick. And like, nah, no. Can no. we just keep going? Yeah. yeah. I just want to get to the accommodation. Yeah. Unpack my bag. Yeah. yeah. Which I mean, unzip my bag. That's right. And leave it to spill out onto the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to crack open a tinny. Okay. <laughs> Oh, there's nothing better like after Plus a long no drive out here of that tinny getting cracked. Plus, the world's largest bird cloaca is just down the road as well. <laughs> yeah. We've already we've already planned to go to that. Yeah, so, so do we have to do both. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one day we'll be on a journey past the wild. Yeah, dick. and we'll then see we'll it then. stop it. But like, I'm not going out of the way for 45 minutes. Yeah. Nah, nah. But thanks, thanks for the uh, option. But yeah, yeah, thanks for the great suggestion. Yeah. Oh, I noticed you're not the one driving, but yeah. you're suggesting 45 minutes out of the way. Windy road too, perfect. Perfect, Just great. what I want. Just what I want. Oh, look, guys, it's the whale dick on the tucker box. Let's go to that <laughs> instead. <laughs> That's perfect for everyone. That's perfect. And it's on the way. Yeah, it's on the yeah, way. It's the big whale dick. One of Australia's many big things. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, anyway, that's the story 
of the Taiwanese exploding whale and, of course, also the story of the Florence, Oregon exploding whale. I don't know if you have any final thoughts before we wrap up. Um, I loved it. I also loved it, yeah. <laughs> That's, was that so hard? <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Yep, great call. Blow it, it up. Had everything we needed. Yeah. A big whale. Yep. You explode the whale. Yep. Bits of a whale. Mm-hmm. Whale dick at the end. Yep. Yeah. Had everything I've ever asked for in yeah, a podcast. Right. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us, May. So you do have to run off to record your other very good podcast, <laughs> which I think of this. You. Uh, I, yep. This I, is the this is the time. I'm finally going to do one. <laughs> I saw a um. I saw a quote from Josh Homme recently because I saw Eagles of Death Matter last month oh, or yes. whenever. And Josh Homme is the drummer in that band, but he only in the studio. And he said, "They're not my side project. I have two bands." Oh. And I think of that. It's the same for you, the Weekly Planet and mm-hmm. Do Go On Podcast. Yeah, that's right. Only exactly. canon episodes of Do Go On Podcast. That's exactly They're right. Your, yeah. This isn't a side project for you. <laughs> no. This is just one of your two exactly. good podcasts. I've got the Beatles and I've got the other Beatles. <laughs> yes. Like the Beatles did. Yeah. Yes. You know? Yeah. They had the be- people don't a lot of people don't know this, but they had the Beatles and then there was the Beatles without Ringo. Yeah. And they just did Second two. Beatles. <laughs> just did two. Yeah. 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 But your podcast, The Weekly Planet, for people who don't know, I know a lot of listeners to this show uh, are also listeners to that, but some might not know it. It's a, it's a great podcast about, you know, comic book movies and yes. such things. Oh, my God. The, the the wheels are really falling off that train, aren't they? The, the, <laughs> the uh, superhero movie genre. But, yeah, we talk about big blockbuster movies. and Barbenheimer you did yeah, last totally, month. Yeah, exactly. We, you know, we're, we're adaptable. Yeah. Mm. We'll talk about, you know, we'll talk about any kind of IP, whether it be Barbies or atomic bombs. Where do yeah. you sit on the- Propose Mattel Cinematic Universe. Oh, they're going to try one more and it's going to fail and then they're going to stop doing it. It's like, what is it going to be? Yeah. Maybe Hot Wheels? Yes. But Fast and the Furious already exists. That's right. I don't really know if it's required. But yeah, people should check that out. And Macy, we've also just recorded an episode which probably came out weeks ago of Who Knew with Matt Stewart, which we're on. And so was Jess. And it was so much fun. I won. All right. <laughs> All right. I don't know if you're joking or not. I can't remember. It was <laughs> it was already moments ago. <laughs> but thanks so much for being here, What Mesa. a pleasure. Delightful. Always good to be here in stupid old studios. What an honour to have the great man Meso in here as we wave goodbye to him. We can still see him. Bye, Meso. Bye. Can't hear him, though. Can't hear him. He's f- flipping me off, but I think- I think what I can make out he's saying is this is a sign of love. Yes. I think in the tram game they have to, because it's such a life and death industry that he works in, they have to have pretty straight to the point language. Yes. So for I love you, it's one middle finger up and sort of mouthing words, fuck you, which is what it looks like. That's very direct, but what what they're saying is- Love you. Love you. Love you. They've got to do it with a hard F. Yep. Otherwise, you can't. You're like, what letter is that? Yeah. L, anyway. L's too ambiguous. Yeah. F- f- very clear. F- that's love. Yep. Uh, so, anyway, now that he's gone, <laughs> finally we can get to the best part of the show, everyone's favourite section of the show, uh, where we thank some of our fantastic supporters. Without these people, this show doesn't exist. Yep. <sighs> it's gone. Yep. It's like, what, oh, did David Copperfield just come in here? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, the Patreon supporters- Aren't here. There was a mass exodus of Patreon supporters because of something we said. Something we said, and you know we tried to apologise. Yeah, but we, you wouldn't listen. We said, "I'm sorry, your feelings were hurt." Yes, <laughs> we did a soft apology. Yeah, which we thought was enough. We thought that's that'll do. But apparently, it made it worse. So now, and we're yeah, now we're sorry. You're still offended. All the Patreons are gone. Yeah. And we're financially ruined. So, this is the last episode. <laughs> this is the scenario. If in another scenario- Yeah, in another universe- Dave gets back from his holiday <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck happened? I'm sorry, we blew it up. I'm sorry. We blew it up. You don't and have And he'll a be job. like, what are you, David Copperfield? Ah! And we're like, what? That's an what? old reference, Dave. Dave. And he didn't blow things up. No, he made things Disapp- seem to disappear. Yeah. He was an illusionist, Dave. Dave, what's wrong with what's, you? Are you okay? What? You go away- Do you away hit your head on your trip? On your holiday? You go away on a holiday, you come back stupid? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, Dave, maybe it's time for another holiday, an endless one. Yeah. Fuck off, we say. And he says, I love you too. Why don't you take a long holiday off a short pier, yeah, Dave? Yeah, we say. We say. In that scenario. <laughs> but not- But luckily, <laughs> in the real world scenario- <laughs> We are here to thank some of our great Patreon supporters. Uh, if you want to sign up, you can do so at patreon.com slash 
patreon.com slash do go on pod. And there's a bunch of different levels you can go to, all sorts of different things you can get involved with. Facebook group. Yep. Voting on topics. Uh, Early access to tickets. Three bonus episodes a month. And at the time of recording, we're only 150 new patrons away from doing four bonus episodes per month. Yeah. With the fourth one being some sort of a and d campaign. Yeah, it's going to be wild. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, one of the other things we do is the fact, quote, or question section. And this is for people on the Sydney Scheinberg level. If you sign up there, you get to give us a fact, a quote, or a question, or a brag or a suggestion, or really whatever you like. You also get to give yourself a title. And this section actually has a jingle. So it goes something like this. Fact, quote, or question. Ding. I always remember the ding. And she always remembers the sing. Mm. And this week, we've got four, like most weeks. <laughs> And I'm going to read them out now. And I read them out for the first time when I read them out. And the first one here comes from Madeline Baker, aka Managing Director of Directing Management. Oh, thank God. That has that has been a gaping hole in yes, our team. That has been a gaping hole. For a while. Yes. We've really been noticing the impact it has had on us as a business mm. and as people. It hasn't been sitting vacant. It's been sitting gaping. That's right. So I'm very glad to have you, Madeline Baker, finally filling that important role. And uh, Madeline's asking a question, Mm -hmm. writing and asking, are you guys into games night? If so, what's your favourite game to play as a group? Ooh, games night. I... I like games. I don't know. It does, I don't. Re- wouldn't say I regularly play them. I play Yahtzee on my phone a bit lately. I've become okay. probably almost. I would say probably almost have a Yahtzee problem right now. Right. I've been getting to the point where I'm like, well, just for, I'll just do a quick Yahtzee and then I'll brush my teeth. I'll yeah, have wow. a quick Yahtzee. Uh, then I'll uh, walk over to the next room. Oh, before I walk to another room across, I've got two rooms in my house, I will <laughs> just play a quick Yahtzee. Okay. Wow. You're Yahtzee mad oh, right I'm now. Oh, I'm busting for a piss. Oh, but before that, let's Yahtzee. Okay. You, yeah. could, you, you couldn't, like, Yahtzee while you piss? Yahtzee and piss. That's disrespectful to two great things I in my life. I love to do stuff while I piss. Really? Yeah, I love it. Getting things done. Yeah, I'll go. Women I- can <laughs> do that thing with two at once. <laughs> Threesomes. <laughs> no, what is it? If- Multitask. Yes. Yes. Yep. And I guess a threesome is in a lot of ways three at once. Multitasking. But I guess it's you it's and two others. Yeah. We've, I thought, okay, we've gone from like the episode where we're like talking at a normal <laughs> level. We've come back to do this. Later, yes. we've had more coffee in the meantime, more sugar, mm-hmm. and now we're going- oh, blah, 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 I had my blah, blah, famous blah, blah. coffee and orange juice combo. You're a psycho. And I say that with love. Anyway, games. I <laughs> I do like games. Um, oh, yes. I forgot what we were talking about. Love games. Do you want to hear uh, Madeline's qu- yeah. answer first? Madeline writes, mine is the game of things. It's like cards against humanity, but you write your own answers. It gets pretty wild, and I would not recommend playing with your parents because yikes. Oh, okay. This is going to be naughty, does it? <laughs> what if your parents are naughty? Madeline, oh. what if you- What if you- <laughs> What if, uh, Madeline- Have you ever tried playing with your parents, Madeline? Or Jess? I reckon John and your mum- Yeah. Annie- Yes. Would love this game. I've never heard of it. I've never played it. <laughs> But I reckon, <laughs> I reckon from vibe alone, uh-huh. I think they're going to be into it. We go through phases of playing five hundred as a as a family. It's a card game. Yeah, it's a fun card game. I've played, so I don't I don't do games nights frequently, but I do usually enjoy them whenever somebody has the initiative to pull out a game. One I played at a friend's place in a group recently was um, the blockbuster game, where you like I don't know it was it was. I just remember I had like a minute on the clock or something and you had to name as many one word movie titles as you could. Oh, that's fun. And I just like cuz when the time when you when Tootsie. there's time pressure <laughs> <laughs> you never know what your brain's going to access. <laughs> I've it. never seen Tootsie. I don't know anything about Tootsie. I think it's Dustin Hoffman. Yes, that's right. But yeah, it's funny. Annie. Annie. You're doing great so far. Tootsie Annie up. Up. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um Secret Hitler is another fun game. Okay, not what? another fun movie. Another fun movie I've played before. And we have a game- Secret Hitler. Yeah, it's fun. We have a game called Throw Throw Burrito, and you throw burritos at each other. That's a bit of fun. That's just a, like a, a just a food fight? Yeah. Or it's a board game? It's a board game. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm like, that's a waste of burritos. Not um, the way I do it. I catch them in my mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's actually quite efficient. Trivia Pursuit, classic, but mm-hmm. big fan. I love trivia sort of I stuff. I like Cluedo. Cluedo's fun. Cluedo's a bit of fun. I haven't played that in a long time. Nah, What's the movie in the last little while? Is it a movie? Pretty, pretty fun. Oh, there is two. It's called Clue, though, I think. Yeah, because Americans call Cluedo Clue. Yeah. Which we- makes more sense than Cluedo. Well, what the Clu- fuck is that? Cluedo was the first name. I think it was some sort of play on words or something. Okay. Why is it called Cluedo? <laughs> Uh, a play on Clue and Ludo, the Latin word for I play. Okay. Okay, that's so pretty not, highfalutin name. Yeah, it's not really that. Yeah, well, how, do, how can we make this board game more highfalutin? How do we work in some Latin into this board game? Now, now we're talking. I think that was the original name and the Americans were like, let's call we'll it something call it people clue, understand. Which is probably reasonable. Yes, I think so. Um, so, yeah, great question. Do love games. Uh, let's organize a night sometime, Madeline. Yeah, come over. And no parents allowed. <laughs> Just the kids at this one. Let's play Murder in the Dark. <laughs> uh, thank you, Madeline. That was her first fact quote question. Oh, welcome aboard. Welcome. Next one comes from a long time Sydney Scheinberger, uh, Brian Colella. <gasps> Brian. Brian's one of the, one of the greats. Uh, previous primates guest, Brian. One of the OGs, Brian. Found out recently. Didn't? What did he tell us recently? His dad was an Olympian. Swimmer? Oh, my God. Did we talk about that? Swimmer I or think something? So. I think maybe it was even involved, yeah, in Olympics in a, that we yes. talked about. I think it was a swimmer. I think you're right. Amazing. So cool. So cool. Um, And Brian Colella's uh, title is second banana to the 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 second banana, open bracket, and et cetera, close bracket, to the second banana to Matt. That's nice. That's an important role. God, it is. And it has been sitting there absolutely gaping. Yes. It takes a village to support a mat. Takes a Kalela. Takes a Kalela. Takes a, a whole bunch of bananas. Oh, my God. Uh, this is a bit cheeky from Brian, but uh, he's given us both a fact and a suggestion. Oh, okay. I don't know if I can allow that. Okay. I don't care that you've supported us for many years, Brian, <laughs> and you're a really lovely person. Yeah, one of the original supporters. Yeah. Uh, suggested the Vegemite episode. Uh, I'm over not sure dinner. I'm- well, I had dinner with Brian and yeah. I was doing a live episode coming up and he said, you what? thought about Vegemite? And I, I said, Brian, when I look into those eyes, yeah. I can only think about Vegemite. He had beautiful Veg- bre- black Vegemite. Eyes. Black eyes. <laughs> He'd black, just been in shiny, a street fight. <laughs> yeasty eyes. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, I'll read the first one out and if you like it and allow it, we'll read the suggestion. Okay. But the fact is, I love you. Heart emoji. Mm. Do you want the suggestion? Maybe. I'd, okay, I'll, I'll listen to the suggestion, but I don't have to take okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. <sighs> Brian, how dare you? Mm. How dare you implore me to stay stagnant? <laughs> Why don't you encourage <laughs> me to grow, Brian, to change, to evolve, to be? Yeah. Brian. Brian. Kalela's favourite band, Status Quo. Yeah. <laughs> So good. <laughs> Never know which way it'll be. In my brain, I'm like, that sucks. And then just like, and then there's a little laugh. And then uh, it's like you're the emperor with the thumb. <laughs> that was so shit. Oh, fair enough. Good. Oh, my God. I feel awesome about myself. <laughs> You've got a lot of power, Bob. Wield it responsibly. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Brian Clara. Thank you, Brian. We love you. We love you too, and keep doing what you're doing. Uh, yeah, next- how does that feel, Brian? Yeah, don't grow, don't evolve. <laughs> <laughs> Think I want to be like this forever? Yeah, no, thank no. you. No, uh, Julian Ren, <laughs> aka Title Sold Separately, oh, love that is asking a question. Writing at the time of writing this, the Barbie movie is taking over the world. Yes, if they made a Barbie or Ken or action figure of you. What accessories would come included in the box? And uh, we that, always- Can I just say, that is a fucking phenomenal question. That is so good. And at the time of recording, Barbie has only been out for like a week or so. It is ta- Smashing it. taken the world by storm. And there's also been a TikTok trend of uh, people, particularly women, talking about um, – their Ken, using their like talking about their partners as if he is a Ken and what he comes with and what his job is and stuff. It's pretty funny. Honestly, um, this is I think this is what's wrong with women. 
and I can say this as a feminist, uh-huh. men aren't toys. Uh-huh. Men aren't possessions. We are human beings. Yeah. Yeah, you should see the movie. Um, <laughs> then I think it'll make- I think you'll like it. Mm. <laughs> as a feminist, probably. <laughs> Um, okay. As a cuck, sure. What would Matt come with? Probably a little a little bottle of soy milk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Snowflake. Hat. You'd have a hat. Yes, a hat. A hat, a little bottle of soy milk. Mm. Um, yeah. uh, you'd be wearing like a cool band t-shirt. Yeah. T-shirt. Um, you need another accessory. Hat, soy milk. <laughs> I mean, clothes and a drink. I'm actually a pro- I've- I'm a pretty wild character. Okay, so what else? What else do you no, like? No, I was I was being self-deprecating there. I'm aware. Okay. <laughs> what else do I like? What uh, else do you do? A footy. But yeah, I'm- you can have a little footy. That's cute. Something to play with. That's nice. Mm, yeah, I really need to go out and get some interests. No, nah, you've got plenty. A beer. You can have a beer and a soy milk. That's crazy. Well, I don't mean, drink it at the same that time. Is that far off? You can have a and- slab. Oh yeah. What about a slab of beer yeah. and a footy? Slab of kaiju crush. Okay, and then you're like a fun guy heading for a heading for I'm a just barbecue. A fun guy. You got the footy already, and I don't need everyone to know that, but I will tell them. Hey, <laughs> go, I am a fun guy. Okay, <laughs> you will say that, and people will believe it. That's the difference. Yeah, yeah. Um, me, uh, Barbie Jess would come with probably a oh a little dog. She'd mm. have a little French bulldog. Yep. And like the lead and stuff to walk the dog, and maybe like the. Mattel's misunderstood your order and they also give you like a just a barbecue with some tongs because you love to cook. Love to cook. You love to cook. Could I also have like a little camera, like a little Polaroid camera or something? What about a little box brownie? That's cool. What about if it was like a tiny little Barbie sized Polaroid camera, but it actually worked and you could print out teeny tiny photos? That would be incredible. That'd be so cute. Can you do, I don't know if you're taking requests, but can you do the history of uh, the Kodak of Kodak or something one time? Oof. Or just or photography? I I've got to say, oh, I think that would be quite boring. Oh, okay. It, I think it is. There's some interesting stuff. I know. Yeah. I only know because uh, in a Bill Bryson book, he goes into it a little bit. <laughs> uh, Sorry, anyway, I fell asleep for a second there. I think that's my answer. A little camera and a dog. Julian answers the question. We always yes. ask the question writers to answer the question, saying, my doll would probably come with an iced coffee in hand and two Dalmatian toys with real shedding action. Ooh, that's <laughs> fun. You could, what? Really make a mess. The, your Velcro that back on and then that's great stuff. That is good. Julian, fantastic. And oh, last- Julian, I don't think it, you and I are far off. I think, like, if, yeah, I think maybe add an iced latte to mine too and then that's that's Jess Perkins right You're there. You're a bloody latte. I got a dog and I got, I got some cameras. Uh-huh. Uh, thank you, Julian. And last one this week comes from Jessica English, aka Vice President of Random Hyperfocus Obsessions. <laughs> and Jessica's question is- I relate hard to that. Yes. Oh, Jessica writes, hello, our lovely overlords of grim, funny, and boring facts. Oh, the boring boy's not here. Thank God. God, we've had fun today. Grimmy. Gr- f- 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 what was it, did we call it before? Fum, fum brim. Grim from- no, that was on a different podcast we recorded. <laughs> I think I was on Who Knew It, we record, We yes. talked about Fun Grim. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Hmm. Uh, Jessica goes on to say, As someone with ADHD, I develop some strange obsessions at times and become a near expert in them before abandoning them completely for a new obsession. Yep. Uh, that sounds like, I mean, it's different, of course, but it does sound a bit like being on this show. We're an yeah. expert in a different topic every week. And then forget all about it. Uh, is there something that you are or have been particularly obsessed with or about lately? TV show, book, hobby? Oh, man. Oh, my entire life. Yeah. I've gone, yeah, I have a quite, I've, what I've always said, and it probably is a similar kind of ADHD thing, but I, I've always said I have a somewhat obsessive personality where I'll get really into something for a while and then just it completely falls apart. Mm. It's been book series, movies, TV shows, um, activities. It's more, it's more likely that I'll get really lost in a world of something, like a book series or a TV show. But sometimes it is. I'm going to do this activity. I'm going to, I'm going to teach myself how to do this. Yep. But then I also am a perfectionist, and if I'm not good at something straight away, I crack the shits. Right. So yes, it's that's a tricky fun. combo. Yeah, it is. Tricky combo. It, if I get lucky and I hyper focus on something that I have a natural ability in, or I pick up quickly, then we're then we're okay. Yeah. But if not, <laughs> like a Yahtzee phone game. Exactly right. If I'd be so good at that, <laughs> so I would get obsessed with it. 
I feel like maybe my most recent one, or and I've sort of I've just dropped out of it, mm. but for a few months, Batman, like Gotham yeah. and uh, Penny, whatever that Pennyworth, and I can't remember. I couldn't tell you the characters' names now, but there was a time where I'm like, that's all those shows, and then I went back and I watched all the Chris Nolan Batmans, mm. and I watched the new, but I watched and the. Old ni- 80s and 90s ones. Oh, wow, yeah. You went all the and way. And I've just read an, or listened to an audio book about the history of Marvel and DC. That's and cool. I think I've probably, I'm coming to the point where I'm like, all right, I think. I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to. Yeah. <laughs> you sort of, you feel yourself slipping out of it. Slowly. Yeah. Um, I didn't give many examples there. I got really into Hunger Games when that when I first read that and then the movies came out and I got into those again. Pitch Perfect, funnily enough, the yeah, first right. one I was like very into. Is that Rebel Wilson? Yeah. So I saw that at like three times at the cinemas. I thought it was so good. <laughs> um, it's fine. Okay. Uh, I don't think I've seen it. The first one's fun. Then they made a second and a third and they got progressively worse. But the first one's a bit of fun. Who's the main actor in it? Uh, Anna Kendrick. Anna Kendrick. She's great. She's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. I That's do- is our rebel. Oh, God. Um, yeah, I get very – I do get – TV shows I get really – I get very lost in and quite obsessed with them and then never watch them again. Yeah, I do that a lot. I can relate real hard to that. Well, uh, Jessica's also answered the question, which is yes. great. Writing, my current obsessions include planning for a Disney World trip by watching way too many YouTube videos and listening to podcasts and oh, the dude. Australian kids show Bluey, which I watch over and over. Bonus question, if you have watched Bluey – I have seen. Have you seen any Bluey? Bits and pieces, yeah. Custard. I don't know if you'll know this, Jessica, because I'm guessing just from the way you said the Australian kids show, mm. you're not from Australia, but maybe you are. But anyway, the dad, Bluey dad, yep. was the singer from a band I used to, oh, I still love called Custard, mm. and it's so it's just real fun to hear him. Um, it's just a, it's a just a fun show. It's a kid show, but it feels like it could be beautiful show. Uh, an anybody show, and maybe it is. Um, but it says, do you have a favourite episode or character? Mine's Muffin. All right, I, I, pro- I couldn't tell you any of the names, but I, I like could, Bingo. I, I could, hu- I could hum the song. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> Bingo's a great name. Bingo's really cute. Um, no, I don't think I could tell you any of the names. Or episodes. I can't really remember any episodes, but but I remember it being nice. It's a nice it's show. It's a nice show. Um, but I think, did you suggest one? I'll watch whatever you just said. I'll watch whatever you just said. Uh, I'll watch Muffin. I don't know if that, that's probably the character though. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, Jessica, Julian, Brian, and Madeline. Uh, the next thing we like to do is... Thank a few of our other great supporters. Jess, you normally come up with a bit of a game based on the topic at hand. Yeah, I was thinking what uh, we're going to say a minor inconvenience they solve with explosives. Oh, yeah, great. I don't think a whale on a beach is a minor inconvenience, but the, these inconveniences are minor. Yep. And there are other solutions, but they're going straight for explosives. Because we normally do three each with Dave. What if I do the first five, you do the last four, but on mine you have to do the inconvenience and for yours I'll do it. Okay. All right. Well, first off, I'd love to thank from North Epping in New South Wales here in Australia, it's Zoe. Locked themselves out. Oh, yeah. Blow up the door. Blow up there. <laughs> Accidentally, they're like, oh, is this too much? Not enough. Yeah. Blows the whole front of the house off. Yeah. But it's back they're inside. They're in, are they? Back inside, back in bed, and they were knackered. <laughs> So, tucked up nicely, Zoe. Love that. Uh, I'd also love to thank from Taunton in, I reckon, Somerset Mm -hmm. in Great Britain, it's Emily Sandley. Um, uh, Locked out of the car. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Blow out the car. I was only meant to blow the bloody doors off, (laughs) which I did, but also- I think you'll see a bit of a theme (laughs) emerging. No, I won't. I won't make them all locking yourself out or something. (laughs) Thank you very much, Emily. The next one uh, from McKay in Queensland here in Mm -hmm. Australia. It's Laura Fraser. Uh, Searching through – so, Laura's at work, right? Yes. Searching for an email from a particular colleague. Okay. Cannot for the life of her find it. Knows that colleague sent it. Yeah. Can't find it. It's that Outlook thing where you're searching and it's not finding what you're looking for. Blow up the computer. Oh, man. That feels (laughs) – 
right. Feels so right. I thought you said minor inconvenience. <laughs> that, feel, that one feels appropriate. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> how is finding an email not a minor inconvenience? <laughs> Yeah, that does feel right. Well, That's that, what you want to do when your computer's bloody playing up. Writing this report, uh, I had a similar feeling of wanting to blow up the computer because there was this uh, there was this quote from a scientist, but I had about eighteen tabs open with different articles. Oh, you couldn't and find it, and I couldn't it? find it. Oh, I couldn't find. I couldn't quite remember which one it was. I'm like doing word searches in. on every page, yep. going. I'm sure it had the word neighborhood in it, but. Mm-hmm. I just could anyway. It was very frustrating. Did you end up finding it? No. Nah. That so is infuriating. In the, I ended up saying I read somewhere where yeah. I would normally like to say who said it, but anyway. That is infuriating. I'm sorry that happened. But thank you so much, Laura. Uh, the next person, uh, address unknown. Oh. Return to sender. Can only assume from deep within the fortress of the moles. But thank you very much, Beth. Beth was uh, heading home from work. Got to the train station just as the train pulled out. Like, mm. just missed it. Next one comes in, like, 20 minutes, an annoying amount of time to wait. Blow up the train station. Blow up the train station. <laughs> <laughs> Has become a domestic terrorist, but- <laughs> Worth it. In Got court, home faster. <laughs> in, it, like, in court and in the court of public approval. Yeah. Everyone understood. Everyone gets it. They're like, it. we get it. We get it. Trains, huh? Everyone else waiting- Everybody else who'd just run, trying to make the train and just missed it was like, I, I back Beth. That was the right thing to do. I love the name, Beth. Me uh, too. One of my faves. From, uh, I, just in case, Beth from Address Unknown, her her email surname starts with P. Okay. Prob- just in case she doesn't want, yeah, hasn't yeah. put the surname in there on purpose. Um, but also is like, I wonder if that was me. Yeah. Beth P. <laughs> Beth P. That narrows it down. Uh, the final one for me from Preston here in Victoria, Australia, in Melbourne, it's Tia Evans. Tia, another great name. These are all- Zoe, Emily, Laura, Beth, and Tia are five of the top <sighs> names. So good. Good luck keeping up with that in your half. Jeez, oh, Louise, I'll try, but <laughs> I'm having a look, and they're all dog shit names. <laughs> 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 and here's what happened to Tia, right? Yep. Tia uh, made a cup of tea, mm-hmm. phone rang, went and grabbed that. Got stuck on the bloody blower with mum, you know, and she's doing that thing where she's like, oh, so your Uncle Rod texted me the other day and he said, and you're like, I don't care. And you're like, yeah, so you remember Rod? Not really. Yeah. Oh, oh you remember Denise? Yes. Yeah. No. So Denise was the one who went to school with Rihanna. Uh-huh. You remember Rihanna with the red hair? Yeah, sure. She. We used to play Jim Rummy together. Yeah, uh-huh. no, I remember. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you do remember. I'm going to give you eight more facts about Rihanna. Um, so, mum's done that, gone on for a bit long. By the time Tia's finally got mum off the phone, everything's fine, by the way. Mum was just calling for a, for a chin wag just to check in. Um, Tia's which come- is nice. Which is lovely. Which, but and nice to remember that it's a nice thing. Exactly right. And mums aren't around forever. No. Nah. But, and you'll miss it when mum's dead and gone. This is certainly not for me. <laughs> this is for everyone else. <laughs> but Tia gets back to this cup of tea that Tia was really looking forward to. And it's gone cold. Tea's like, fuck. Could make another tea, but that feels wasteful mm. of the water, of the tea bag, yeah. etc. I'll just put a tiny little bit of explosives yeah. in there. Heat it up a little bit. Okay. Does that? Delish. Just oh. right. Absolutely nailed it. Gets on with their day. Right. Like a tiny little explosion. Tiny just to, explosion. Just, just enough to, really to generate some heat. He- heat it up. Well done, Tia. Yeah. That's and like, MacGyver level. Absolutely nailed the amount of explosives. It was the perfect- It was like, I can drink it right now, but it's- Hot, yes. You know that. You know how sometimes you, you make a cup of tea; it's too hot for a while. Mm-hmm. You got to let it sit, and then you take a sip. You're like, "Yes, this is just right." That's where tea got it too. Yes, so good, so satisfying, so good. Um, I'll thank some people now as well. That'd be great, if good, yeah. And good luck because I just had some absolute rippers there. Yeah, I would love to thank from Emsworth in Great Britain, Danielle and Adam Osborne. Oh, great names! Well, Danielle and Adam Osborne were doing a bit of work in their garden. They had to pull out this tree that mm-hmm. was taking up big space because they wanted to build a pergola. Yep. Uh, but the root was in so deep they couldn't get it out. Ugh. So they ended up dynamiting it out. Yeah. And bonus, new pool. Oh, that is great. Yeah. Pergola and a pool. Yeah. It's like a floating pergola. And before that, they didn't think they had they didn't space. Have, they didn't have either of those. Yeah. Now they have both. Oh, and living in Emsworth in Great Britain, you'll yeah. get so much use out of yes. a pool. I imagine so. Having mm. watched the cricket last month, mm-hmm. uh, what, that doesn't rain in summer there. That's for sure. That's for sure. 
I we I hassled my parents so much wanting a pool growing up. And I now I think and they were always like, No, we mm. won't use it. Yeah. And in Melbourne, you're right. Yeah. You won't. You'll use it twice and then you've got to look after it the rest of the year. Go to a friend's house with a pool. Yeah, go to if you're the lucky, pool. But probably more likely go to the pool. Go to the it beach. It takes up the whole backyard. But if you are flying in Queensland or northern New South Wales and you're flying over suburb, every backyard has a pool and you go, fair enough, you're going to use that. i got a, a mate, one of my old schoolmates is a pill, a pill builder. <laughs> He's a pool builder. Yes. And uh, he built one for my uncle. So now there's, I don't live nowhere near there, but a Christ- there Christmases a are down there sometimes. Which is when it is hot, mm. and that's that's the like the only pool I would ever swim in. But it must be a nightmare to look after. But yes, man, I took a long way around. I should have just said my uncle has a pool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, so I did the thing. I did the thing we we're just talking about. So I made it's I went to happening. school. With, yeah, you're old. <laughs> uh, I would also love to thank from Kilworth in Cork in Ireland, Megan. Oh, Megan, Cork, <laughs> great neck of the woods, uh, Megan. I forgot what we're doing here. Megan actually, um, unfortunately, was stuck uh, in a cave. Uh, took shelter there down searching uh, in the Arctic Circle. Wow. Uh, was on an expedition and uh, s- sook shelter. Is that like- Sought? Seek? Sought shelter and uh, got it in a cave. Yeah. But a huge storm came down um, and she was snowed in. Luckily- uh, she had a lazy half ton of dynamite oh, in her nice. in her bag, and she was actually like, "Ugh, she's getting sick of carrying this around." Half a ton. So that, like- you know, after a while, that mm. is that feels very heavy. Yeah. So ended up using that and blew her way out of it. <laughs> blew her way to freedom. Yeah. Wow. That's great. Megan. Must have felt so satisfying, and it, yeah, it just worked. It was just like what a relief. Yeah, absolutely. Get it all out. <laughs> And then you don't, you're not carrying that huge load anymore. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So good to hear that you're safe, Megan. Yeah, that's Megan. great. And you made it. You made it to your destination. <laughs> yeah. I would also love to thank from Louisville. KY has got to be Kentucky, oh, right? Oh, yeah. And that's Louisville. Yeah. I would love to thank Chris Sexton. Oh, Chris Sexton. Uh, Chris Sexton. Uh, very qu- <laughs> quite. Different to Megan, yeah. interesting, was holidaying uh, on, a, on a beach paradise. Gorgeous. The Whit Sundays. Oh, beautiful part of the world. And uh, Chris's nephew was there. It was a little <laughs> family holiday. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you are doing it. You are getting old. His nephew, uh, Brandon, he's- uh, Brandon, he, was, he, was, <laughs> he did the classic thing of bearing himself up to the head, but they couldn't get him out and the high tide was coming in. Uh-oh. So, Chris is like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? Luckily, I've got half a ton of dynamite. (laughs) So, he exploded. What was his name? Jaden. Brandon. Brandon out of the sand um, and made a beautiful little rock pool. Mm. And Brandon is recovering. (laughs) They're saying Brandon's going to pull through, (laughs) which is great news. That's great for Brandon. And great great use of dynamite for Chris. Yes. And finally, I would love to thank from Cardiff in Wales, Michael Hughes. Michael Hughes. Uh, now, what Michael Hughes was doing was he was uh, attempting to slay a dragon to save a princess. But as we know, uh, in the post-Barbie era, I assume <laughs> princesses don't need saving. <laughs> so, he got there and she'd already uh, emancipated herself. And she was like, honestly, it's quite patronising. Yeah, so you didn't need to do that. Yeah. So, what he did was- um, He's, he's like, oh, well, I feel awful. Yep. Um, I don't know what to do here. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know what? I'm just going to blow up the dragon. That'll yeah. make me feel better. Yep. And, you know, the, the dragon looks to be injured. And this is the most humane way of doing it. Yeah. So, he put about half a ton of dynamite <laughs> uh, next to the dragon's blowhole, which is its mouth. Yeah. Um. And that's where he thought the head might be around yep. that area. Yeah. And he just blew that fucking head right off. <laughs> <laughs> so, well yeah. done, Busy. You got it done. Yeah. <laughs> you made yourself feel better. Sometimes sometimes you got to blow something up yeah. to cheer yourself up. That's right. 
Uh, thank you so much to Michael, Chris, <laughs> Megan, Danielle, Adam, Tia, Beth, Laura, Emily, and Zoe. You're all fantastic people, mm. and you've all you've blown a hole in my heart. Yep. Uh, and the last thing we need to do, Bob, is welcome some people in the Triptych Club. Do you want to explain how this works? Absolutely. So, um, what this is is a um, an exclusive club for people who have um, supported us on patreon.com slash dogonpod for three consecutive years mm. at the shout, shout out level, level or above. above. And uh, what it is is we welcome you in. There's food, there's snacks. Um, Dave's away, so I actually booked a band this time. Oh, cool! As book? well, I booked Whale. Ah. Oh. Um. The they're from. <laughs> hang on. Uh, they're Sweden. Oh. Um. They're a pop outfit formed in 1986 in Sweden, and they'll be playing all their big hits like uh, Hobo Hump and Slow Babe. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. Hobo Hump and Slow Babe. Okay. Or Slobo, babe. I think, yeah, the translation from Sweden into English, there, you lose a bit of the poetry of it. But yeah, I don't feel it comfortable is a beautiful doing song. a Swedish accent. Um, four big speakers, another one of theirs. Uh, Kicking. Yeah. Uh, but definitely Hobo Hump and Slobo, babe. So that will be there. Um, I always, I'm behind the bar and I'm serving whale, which is really ethically oh, not good. Oh, not at you, not ethically <laughs> sourcing your whale? Oh, I don't know if there's a way to ethically source whale. Is there? Isn't it bad to eat? Well, if, <laughs> I mean, if the people of Perth are already exploding the whale, yeah. I think then it's, at, it's, you know, they're trying to get rid of the whale. Okay, so I'm when it, when whales are being exploded, I'm out there with a big old tub, mm. big bucket type yeah. thing. I've just got catching ice in liquid there, whale. Just capturing, and I'm, then I'm using that for a beautiful digger station. And then you sort between the solids yeah. of the whale and the liquids of the whale. The liquids probably become your drinks. That's right. And the solids become your foods. Yep. And you're welcome. Your wets and your dries. And Matt, you usually uh, you're at the door. You lift right. the velvet rope. You welcome people in. Yes. Um, Dave usually hypes them up. How about I give you a break from reading these Ooh, terrible it. names? Terrible. Because I know it's so hard for you to do. That the hardest part of this is reading the names. That's right. Dave so, does the easy bit, which is come hyping out them with, up. Yeah, with dog shit wordplay. Yeah. Um, so I'll read them for you. It's hard because he's so good at wordplay. And you can hype them. Does that uh, sound okay? Yeah, I'd love to hype some people. Okay, great. Well, first, so there's only a couple um, joining us this week into the Tribute Club, and we would love to just spend some time welcoming them from Fantry Gully in Victoria, Kerry Toomey. Kerry Toomey, you are so beautiful to me, can't you see? Uh, can't you see? Thank you so much, and welcome into the club. Beautiful. And from Ingleburn in New South Wales, it's Don's Ronald Vargas. Don's that's not, that's not Ronald it. Vargas. Uh, Ingleburn. You're from Ingleburn? Well, I want to Engelbert Humperdick you. And by that, I mean croon you a beautiful song. One of Engelbert's songs. I can't think of any of them. Nah. But it's like something like... No, that'd be that's one of them. he's English. Uh, hello, um, <laughs> you're beautiful. Engelbert Humperdinck. What's one of his big ones? Uh, a man without love. Can't take my eyes off you. Quando, quando, quando. Uh, tell me quando, quando, quando. No. Oh, that's nice. Don Ronald Varagis. Oh, that's beautiful. Tell me Don Ronald Dumont. <laughs> That's really nice, Don's Ronald. That was Don's from Ronald. the heart, Don's Ronald. Don's Ronald, I think we can all agree that was really nice. Okay, Don's, <laughs> I've never actually opened myself up to be that nice before. <laughs> and I feel vulnerable, so I hope you appreciated that it. That was really, really nice. That was nice. actually the nicest thing I've ever done. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Make yourselves at home, Don's Ronald and Kerry. Mm. And then that brings us to, uh, that's everything we have to do admin-wise. Just finally, we'd love to- I don't think of it as admin, by the way. I do. It is an absolute chore. <laughs> Did not get that sentence out very well. <laughs> I don't think of it as admin, by the way. I think of it as uh, not only my duty, but my honour. Okay. Um, and I would just like to remind people that we love them, that they can suggest mm. a topic at dogoonpod.com. Dot com, which is our website. You can find us at Dugo on Pod on all social media. If Dave's listening, we hope you're okay. I don't. Please, um, <laughs> please get in touch. Dave, we're sorry for whatever we did. Yes, you got to talk to us. Stop leaving. Yeah. Stop fleeing the country. You're doing it quite a lot. It's too much. People are talking. <laughs> 
What is he up to? What do you to? think you are? A 21 year old backpacker on a gap year? Come on! Act your age! You're an old man Stay now! Stay at home all the time! Please! Please! For where the we love can see God. you! I wanna keep our eyes on you! Give me a key to your hand! You're like heaven to touch! I wanna hold you so much! Um, yeah, and as we always say, <laughs> do go on. What do we always say? I don't know. Waiters! Bye! Bye.